plan involves several measures. By October 1st, senior intelligence service officers will be assessed on their ability to create and maintain a diverse workplace environment. By 2016, all of these officers will attend diversity and inclusion training. These measures accompany action carried out prior to the study's release, including the establishment of a talent center of excellence, regular engagement with agency resource groups that represent the CIA workforce, and the requirement of supervisors to participate in a 360-degree feedback program. Brennan explained the focus on workplace diversity and promoting talent from within has been frequently deflected by global events that consume senior agency officials' time. The study included anonymous quotes from CIA officials that corroborated this explanation, and Brennan himself noted the U.S. military has outperformed the CIA in promoting minorities to top positions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Oklahoma is looking to resume executions as soon as August after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled last week that a drug used in the state's lethal injection mix was appropriate and legal. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt has filed a request with the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals to set execution dates for three death row inmates who were part of the suit before the U.S. Supreme Court. Lawyers for the inmates argued the drug, a sedative named midazolam, cannot achieve the level of unconsciousness required for surgery, making it unsuitable for executions. Florida, which had used the drug in 11 lethal injections, had placed a hold on executions while the case was before the court. It also plans to resume executions soon. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Jack Daniels announced today its plan to start marketing directly to children, adding, quote, why not? Executives for the whiskey company told reporters that they've already slated dozens of television spots showing 10-year-old children drinking tumblers of Jack and Coke in playgrounds and that the company was planning on, quote, just seeing how it all played out. Every year, Jack Daniels sells millions of dollars of great American whiskey to men and women all over the world. So for our next ad campaign, we basically just thought, hey, why not just start marketing this stuff straight to 10-year-olds? I mean, if they catch us, they catch us, but we'll see how far it goes, and hopefully we can sell some alcohol along the way. Sure, some parents' groups could get upset, especially if we go with our idea of moms serving their kids cranberry jack at snack time. But in other news, a doomed rabbit will teach an eight-year-old a lesson about responsibility, and a torrent of soap issues from a wildly unexpected part of the dispenser. Well, that was it. It's all downhill from here, bud. For more, visit theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. Hey, it's Free Talk Live. We do a radio show where you can call in and talk about anything you want to discuss here. The toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. In the studio tonight, as usual, it's Ian and Mark, uh, but normally we've got a Dave Ridley with us. He has uh, taken off to parts unknown. Uh, he'll be back at some point, probably later on this summer. So I invited Taryn Lupo in to hang out with us. Hey, I'm allowed to play in the, the big boys' chairs. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a little bit of radio here and there. You've certainly been a, a, a guest on Free Talk Live yeah. in the past. You were a host on Wheels Off Liberty, which has to be one of the most popular liberty-oriented That's shows true. ever. I can't believe people still bring that show up. I mean, it's been like <laughs> off the air for four or five years. Has it been and, that uh, long since there's been a I episode? think so. I think it was 2009 I'm still or bitter 10. about it, i got to say. I, just, I would go back in a minute, but it's uh, Jamie Crane had a kid and disappeared. It's, That'll happen, It's man. this thing about having children, and... Yeah. Uh, Yep, yep. And then Brian Hagen and I had a show, uh, the uh, Liberty Cats, which was pretty pretty well received too. And uh, you know he's he's hoping to do that again. So that's that's cool. in the works. I know he's got some family stuff. He's yeah, that's get what it out. is. Is he's got personal stuff. But I'm available. I'm here in New Hampshire. So yeah, if you, you want to do a move. show? Invite me. You're you're fresh, man. I fresh am. off the uh, the bus, so to speak. When did you make the move up here? Two I actually months? moved two months ago, but yeah. I actually haven't been here but about two weeks because 
we oh, had really? to go back and forth and get my girlfriend's stuff. So we were back Kate, and forth. Yeah, Kate. very nice. Yeah, thank you. She met liked her, uh, and in, during the movement, I don't think I met her prior to that. Actually, yeah, she's and uh, so she. We had to go all the way to Minnesota to get her stuff and then come back. Oh, wow. So I have not actually had a time to hang out. <laughs> You're and, not even unpacked yet. Though, no, right? because I mean, we just went right to Pork Fest when we got back. Right. So. Well, welcome to Free Talk Live. We're going to I'm talk excited. more about you here Thanks. in a little bit, Taryn. And I uh, want to go to a special guest who we actually haven't on, had on for a while. And, Mark, you invited uh, Ted Anderson. Uh-oh. Well, mm. never mind then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, no, Ted. It's live radio, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll do our best to. Does he to, count that money? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do our best to get Ted back here. Mark, do you want to, um, I guess, talk a little bit about Ted for a moment and, and maybe why you wanted to have him on? I'll see if I can ring him back up. Yeah, sure. Ted Anderson, besides being the guy that uh, brings you, uh, you know, the Genesis Radio Network, he's, uh, I guess, the real sort of moneymaker behind it all is Midas Resources. And what Midas Resources is, is is a company that uh, buys and sells gold. And they have been behind Free Talk Live for many years, and I've bought a lot of gold and silver from them over the years. Um, I think that it's a great hedge against inflation. Never sure whether what exactly is going to happen happen with uh with the currency so i just keep uh keep an eye out yeah it, it really blows me away i have never seen silver prices this low for so long that's and, why i wanted to have i'd really like to see what he thinks the reason is and because every time i think oh okay this isn't gonna last it goes lower i don't <laughs> i don't understand i mean i remember when it busted under 20 dollars a few years ago i was like oh it'll never go lower and i i bought right. as much as i could I remember when it was at 50, and um, Michelle Seven and I were having a conversation about it, and she said, well, let's just go buy it again when it gets under 20. And I'm like, that's never going to happen. She yeah. was sure to remind me that that, uh, in fact, did happen. But well, What's uh, interesting is when it gets this low, it's actually hard to buy. Most of the buyers um, uh, don't want to sell it at that price. Right. You know, um, And you'll never find anything directly at spot. It's always a little markup because people got to make money, and it costs money to make these coins. But um, the other thing is, it's just hard because people think you can buy it at that price, and and you really can't. You have to be a big boy. Yeah, buy it. indeed. That's uh, they, they don't do uh, they don't make it possible for us to buy at spot. That's just not the way it it, it goes. But um, you know, there's obviously the dealers are selling somewhere. They're using spot as a reference, and so as does uh, Ted and um, over at Midas Resources, they. Uh, you know, they're using spot. I mean, because everybody's looking at the spot price. They're going to Kitco or whatever, and they're they're, they're taking a look, and they want to know, well, this is what it's worth. And, of course, they're trying to find the closest thing to spot possible, and that isn't possible. You have to buy $10,000 worth or whatever something it is. Like that. Yeah, have it delivered on a forklift or something. <laughs> I have no idea how that uh, could possibly I remember occur. I looked into minting my own coin once for a book I was promoting. I wrote this book about pirates, and I thought it'd be cool to have my own pirate oh, yeah. coin to sell and promote and uh just the setup on it was pretty ridiculous to strike a coin and how much you have to buy to get a decent price that was uh, pirates of savannah yeah that was my my first novel that actually did something that's probably what i'm best known for although i've gotten much better at writing my, my new books are much better but nobody reads them so <laughs> <laughs> they still what? read the worst book i ever wrote i thought the uh... i loved it it was a, yeah? for me it was a page turner pirates oh, thanks of savannah oh that's right yeah i, I was in you jail one. that's right so, you sent me you a copy. <laughs> and uh, I later, did. later it ended up for civil in... disobedience yeah right later it ended up in uh one of the uh, the book weight bags i guess you could call them that like the the guys would put books that were heavy in bags and use them as, as, sort as of weight weights lifting. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that that's yeah. where that the future of uh, your book yeah it's because I remember, uh, you know, I, I still had a few of these. I was going around making a living selling these books. And uh, and then it got harder and harder to sell. You actually making a living them. at it. Well, I mean, not. Such I was, that it was. <laughs> uh, you know, not much. Yeah. But I was getting a lot more money on ebooks. What I was really selling the books were to make contacts and get emails. You know, over the two years I was out doing this, I collected probably a thousand emails of people that actually bought the book. And that's worth a lot of money because when you write another book, you got a thousand people you can contact right away. Yeah. So, unlike most authors, I made ninety-five percent of my money on eBooks, almost none on print. Wow. I mean, it was just a few, and I think that's different than most Liberty books. What about uh, so Pirates of Savannah um, was your first, but my favorite was uh, One Nation Under Blood. Um, how'd that do? <laughs> that you know did okay. The ratings were great, but it, the sales never really took off on it. Um, it paid for itself to develop it, but that was about it. 
I uh, honestly was kind of getting burned out on promoting, promoting, promoting. When you're an author, it's like people hide from you after a while. Social <laughs> network, they're like, no, don't send me another email about a book coming out. So, so uh, it was it was really hard to get people to actually read. Um, but I appreciate that. I think that was the best book I ever wrote, and uh, you know, nobody's read it. Well, now maybe somebody will go and check it out. Uh, <laughs> One hey, Nation Under Blood. I think we have him now. Oh, we there some, he is. some technical difficulties with the cell phone connection. Do we have Ted Anderson with us? Hello, Ted. Yeah, I'm right here with you. Hopefully yes. you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you now, and you're on with Ian, Taryn, and Mark. And uh, good afternoon or good evening. Uh, you are the president, the founder of Midas Resources. You back the Genesis Communications Network which is the network that uh, provides syndication services for this very radio show. So uh, thank you, Ted, for uh, for all of that. But Mark, why yeah. don't you bring Ted on, on board here? Well, I w first I want to say that, uh, you know, I mean, the, the the collusion aspect, right? Like Free Talk Live is uh, syndicated by Midas, uh, by Genesis Communications Network, which is a sister company of Midas Resources, which uh, Ted's in charge of. Ted didn't, like, corner me and say, look, son, you're going to have to have me on or Free Talk Live's off the air. I asked him <laughs> because... Um, of the very question that you have, Taryn, um, I want to know, Ted, why is silver below, like at like at fifteen bucks right now? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, fifteen fifteen uh, sixty five right now, and yeah. what's going on is the world economy is falling apart. I mean, at least it is in Greece, and uh, and uh, you know, Puerto Rico wants to file bankruptcy, but the United States government has a law that says that it can't. So you would think with those things going on, gold and silver would be going up, not think. down. Uh, we are looking right now at, at uh, silver at fifteen sixty-five. It's down about twelve cents. Gold is at eleven sixty-nine thirty. It's down four dollars and thirty cents. What this reminds me of, Mark, is the times where we had back in the early part of the nineteen eighties when silver was down at about three dollars an ounce, yeah, and uh, gold was down at about two hundred and forty-eight dollars an ounce. And nobody wanted it. There was no bad news that was good enough to make gold and silver yeah. rise and price. It, there really and, wasn't back then. <laughs> no, it just you you couldn't you could you couldn't uh, start a fire by by putting gasoline on it. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. And so that's what's going on right now. Precious metals is out of favor. The Dow Jones Industrial Average has been running up like crazy. The Federal Reserve System is artificially keeping the interest rates low, and uh, that all points toward. You know, good economic uh, news, I guess, here in the United States. For some reason, money is not fleeing to gold. Money is fleeing to, you know, for to cash right now. The banks have a, a ton of cash. They don't have enough people to lend it to. Uh, there's a surplus of that. Nobody wants precious metals. And I can tell you right now, if you if you put this together in your head, you'll think, huh, let's see. When gold was down at $248 an ounce, and silver was down at three dollars. Well, actually, yeah, about three dollars and fifty cents. That was a good time to be buying. Ted, uh, hold that you, thought. If you can stick with us, I want to bring. I want to bring you back here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. More on the way. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to TryAncestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit TryAncestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit TryAncestry.com. That's T-R-Y Ancestry.com. TryAncestry.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com 
or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. All right, we're back with Free Talk Live. Plenty of time for you to join us here at 855-450-FREE. Coming up, the First Church of Cannabis in Indianapolis is holding its first service, or it did hold its first service today, and uh, our friend Adamo Freeman from copblock.org was on site for that, uh, so hopefully we'll be hearing from him tonight. I did ask him to give us a call and tell us how that went, because the First Church of Cannabis is currently under police threat. Uh, they were going to arrest anyone who partook in smoking cannabis, so I've yet to hear whether or not anyone actually did. With uh, Adamo Freeman around, I suspect somebody did. So uh, <laughs> we'll find out here in, in a little bit. And that may be why he hasn't called us yet, because maybe he was arrested. I'm speculating. I haven't heard anything. So we'll get back into that here uh, in a moment. Also, you can join us online anytime at freetalklive.com. Let's go back to uh, to Ted Anderson. He's with us. It's Ian, Taryn, and Mark here in the studio tonight. Uh, Ted is there in the uh, Genesis Communication Network studios. Hey, Ted. Hey. You Thanks. know, we're just talking about it. While, while the break was going on, I just pulled up the national debt clock again because it just like, I like to remind myself of exactly what's going on. And right now we're looking at $18.288 trillion, and the gross domestic product is at uh, $17.797 trillion. So the debt is bigger than what we produce. And, I, and I'm watching those numbers just click away, and I think, huh, is there a problem here? You know, it, and that, that's why I'm saying it just sort of baffles me that when you take a look at what's going on economically in Europe, even here in the United States, and you look at precious metals, and to me it just doesn't add up. But I, I can tell you it didn't add up in 1982 either, it, it, and it's not going to add up now. There are so many fundamental reasons why a person would want to own precious metals and have something that's safe and secure in this fashion rather than having a Federal Reserve note, which is, uh, you know, issued by the Federal Reserve System, printed by the U.S. Treasury. And, you know, we, we the tax paper, payer, we the people here in the United States, you know, put up with this and actually have to fund it, the whole process. And uh, and with our with our taxes and also with our our um, 
you know, just inflation causing the erosion of the currency and us have to pay more for raw goods and services. Uh, you know, it, it's funny. You would think Greece going bankrupt would cause the price of precious metals to go up. If that happened in 19, uh, I should say the year 2009, 2010, it would have caused gold probably to rise another $100 an ounce and silver maybe to see a uh, five, uh, five ten dollar move. I mean, it was just enough to make things really roar. And here we are sitting in the opposite side of the economy. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is winning the war. The S&P 500 is. Gold and silver is not as interesting. And that's just the way it is. And it's going to be that way for a little while. I don't see it turning around here within the next month or two. But perhaps by this fall, people will start to pay attention again. But that's the bottom line. For some reason, people prefer not to be in precious metals they like paper currency better, and they like everything that has to do with paper currency, including the uh, equities market and also the bond market as well. Yeah, one of the things when I look at commodities is um, just sort of the way you know the way they react is they kind of find you know they'll, they'll find bottoms and tops, and the what the expectation is is that once you've gotten to a certain height, that it's relatively easier to get back to that height. And um, I I think to some extent that um, you know silver having been at fifty bucks, I don't know a couple of years ago, that it's going to be easier for it to. To, uh, reach back out and touch 50 again um, and it seems to me that it's been like like you said it's just been sort of um, ignored by investors but gold and silver um, they don't get ignored forever that's for sure and I think that people are going to come back and this is just one of those good times to to get in and um, you know I I expect it to be back uh, at some point uh, making much higher highs well, I can tell you this. When they opened up the Egyptian tombs, they did not find Federal Reserve notes in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard they uh, found some marijuana in uh, one of those tombs. They very well could have found marijuana. That was probably way more valuable than this thing that we carry around It in doesn't our keep, that though. Money. That's the problem. You just can't keep it. It, it, goes, it goes bad. <laughs> so I also heard yeah. that, uh, that ISIS has minted its own gold currency. Come recently. on. The denarii. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Did they really? Well, the yeah, they did. <laughs> They're probably dealing in marijuana, too. But you know what? I, I mean, yeah, obviously ISIS is going to take a look at precious metals as a, as a great way to transact business because of the I – mean, I mean, look what Saddam Hussein had. I mean, he had, he had uh, uh, oil tankers that looked like oil tankers, but when you opened them up, they had gold bars in them. Oh, wow. I'm, sure, and the, I'm sure the ISIS yeah. coin has a, a little CIA emblem on the back. Well, I don't know about that. No. Hey, uh, Ted, right now over at gold.freetalklive.com, that's where our listeners can go to hook themselves up with some beautiful gold and silver pieces. What's one of your favorites at the moment? What do you like? Well, there's no question about it. If, if a person is looking for gold, I would go with the Frank coin. Um, mm -hmm. It's a nice small coin. It's something that's portable. It's affordable for most at $258.29. Uh, but I also think the uh, clean silver rounds at $18.74 or uh, take a look at the, uh, the old uh, mercury dimes, that type of thing. They, they uh, come in bags of 1000 and 2055 That's the kind of stuff that is going to be tradable. Uh, it's right. going to be stuff that you can use and barter in the future, and you just simply don't have to worry about you know, whether the government likes you or not, it's it's simply money, you know. Yeah, I like the mercury dimes for doing uh, sort of business with barter, or th those sorts of things, because they're clearly and obviously not an Eisenhower dime, um, you know, made of yeah. pot metal. And... Um, the and I like the the silver um, just bullion these uh, clean silver rounds that you've got there. Um, I like those for sort of having precious metals. Um, and I do have some francs, like you say, but I've got some sovereigns too, and I'm pretty happy with them. Yeah, do you guys still yep. do that deal where you give away a coin with the the book Jekyll Island? Yep, that was like the right. best yeah, deal yeah, ever. Yeah, that, that's that's I remember been that. one of my favorite offers. I you know I got to tell you, G. Edward Griffin. Griffin Hooked me, and I think it was 19, uh, God, it must probably about 1989 or something that I read his book. And ever since then, I'm thinking everybody's got to have this thing. Uh, if you simply don't understand how the Federal Reserve System came into existence or what it's all about, um, that's a book that you have to read. I mean, it's a big book. It's like reading War and Peace, but it's interesting. It's like a novel. Well, it was the very first thing I ever bought from Midas, probably, I don't know, six, seven years ago. And I remember 
for the same price as a book, it's like I got a free piece of silver. Yeah, that's true. You get the I mean, book. I mean, it's a real good deal. And one silver dollar for 25 bucks. Go to gold.freetalklive.com or silver.freetalklive.com. Take a look at uh, what's available there. And then there's also a uh, toll-free number that you can dial them up at, which is 877-857-9938. Maybe a real good time to hook yourself up with some silver mm-hmm. and or some gold while the price is seem to be kind of at a low point. Now, of course, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow, but whatever happens, gold and silver will likely continue to be very valuable over time, whereas government currencies, they it can't blow be worth away. Any, it can't be worth any less, right? Yeah. I mean, silver is at an, a, a, you know, a, a surprising low. Well, you never know what's going to happen, but you do know what's going to happen to government currency, and that is they're going to keep printing and printing and printing and uh, devaluing the uh, the currencies all around the world. Gold.freetalklive.com. Ted, uh, thank you for coming on Free Talk Live tonight. It was nice seeing you uh, last month at the uh, the Talkers Conference as well. I guess he's gone. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> he was on his time for all your That's extra it. stuff there. <laughs> he's a busy man. I mean, run, running a radio network and a gold and silver business. So check him out at silver.freetalklive.com. We'll come back with Secession. It's bubbling up again over there in Europe. We'll tell you where this time people have got Secession on their mind. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. More Free Talk Live continues in moments. All right, so suddenly Walmart, eBay, Amazon, everybody wants to ban the rebel flag. Well, the rebel flag is an important part of American history. The rebel flag is still a long-standing symbol of Southern pride and Southern heritage. So if the big retailers want to play into political correctness and try to deny the history of America, let them. Go to ourflags.com. That's our, like rebel, our, the letter R, ourflags.com. Get your rebel flag before they actually do outlaw the things, huh? Ourflags.com. That's ourflags.com. Go now. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kids' education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com you can listen to free talk live on the radio podcast satellite webcam and our live streams but did you know you can listen to free talk live from any phone anywhere add this number to your phone 213-493-0308 it's a long distance call so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan the listen lines are airing the latest episode of free talk live 24 hours a day including our live shows Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here... I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. 
So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. we got plenty of time for you to join us here on the radio waves. Talk about anything you want to discuss at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, we've got Skype. You can Skype in here at username lrn.fm. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. I'm Taryn. And King Mark the First. 855 450 free. Peacekeeper 1.0 was released at the end of 2014. It was a hit, but there were some problems. Limited features, persistent bugs, lack of a real network. Over at Peacekeeper, they've spent the past six months learning from the mistakes they made on the first app, and they've learned what doesn't work and what does and how to build on it. They're ready to go and uh, develop Peacekeeper 2.0. It's got the potential to be world changing. New features will be included like a verified network of peacekeepers you can call an emergency, and no longer will you just have to rely on your own groups and alliances. Now every peacekeeper in the area is a potential ally. The Peacekeeper app allows you and your neighbors and friends and family to respond to emergency calls. Maybe it's a medical, a fire, or abduction or something like that. You can send out the alert via the Peacekeeper app, and the other Peacekeeper users will receive that alert. Thereby, they can respond, hopefully faster than the people could respond from 911. It's a way to build a decentralized network of uh, people who can assist in an emergency situation. And it's a brilliant concept. They're looking to raise some money to get the programmer into a, a new programmer to come in and create a powerful bug-free system. They need your help, and of course, there are going to be perks involved when you contribute. So go to PK, like Peacekeeper, pk.freetalklive.com, pk.freetalklive.com. Contribute to their Indiegogo campaign today. If you want to see Peacekeeper 2.0 revolutionize what protection means, Contribute to their Indiegogo campaign today. pk.freetalklive.com Coming up, the secession movement is bubbling up in Europe again. All kinds of interesting things are happening in Europe right now, at least you know that is coming across our desk. We, of course, have been talking about Liberland quite a bit, the new country that was just uh, declared between Croatia and Serbia. Haven't heard any news about Liberland no, since I got back from, from Porkfest. That doesn't mean there's nothing happening. It just means that... I'm still catching up after returning from the Porcupine <laughs> Freedom Festival. So if you've heard anything about Liberland, you want to update us, feel free. Of course, the situation in Greece, as you may know, they did default officially last night. And so that situation continues to develop. There's going to be an, a vote coming up on Sunday as far as whether or not the Greek, uh, the people of Greece would like to agree with the austerity measures that the creditors are demanding. In now, order I've to heard they haven't defaulted. Money. They're just essentially late on payments. Uh, well, they officially defaulted. Uh, okay. The deadline was Tuesday, and so last night was the end of that deadline. All right. So uh, that is that is a default on a $1.7 billion payment out of, three, I think, $200 or $300 billion that they had been loaned by the 19 countries in the Eurozone and the International Monetary Fund. Are they talking about detaching from the euro and uh, just printing their own money to get themselves out of trouble? That will likely be what what happens unless the Greek people vote on Sunday to accept the austerity measures that the creditors are demanding. So basically, the Greek government is saying we need we need a bigger bailout. We need more, right? Because they couldn't make this bailout work with three hundred billion or whatever it was. <laughs> now they need more. <laughs> well, the creditors are saying, well, we're not going to give you any more yeah, unless you do X, Y, and Z. No more for you. <laughs> and the government guys are saying, well, we don't want austerity measures, so screw you, but we'll put it up to a vote and see what the, the people want. And so uh, it remains to be seen how that's all going to shake out. Yeah, it Odds blows are good me away. Vote against it. 
that someone would even lend them money to get out of trouble after they got in. It's like it's I crazy. couldn't think of a worse investment to invest yeah. in. It's it's uh, it's really nuts. So I guess you know we'll, well keep they're our acting eyes on now that. that like they're they're sorry a little bit. I mean, there's some Who's been they? some apologies from the Greek government oh, and really? that sort of thing. I don't know what the you know I, I don't know what the specifics are, but I just heard it on NPR. You know, they're 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 seeing the the error of uh, their ways at this point because the default's not looking great. Um, going back to the drachma is bad news for them. So here's the uh, another story from Europe. This one, unless the drachma is backed by gold or silver. This one is from Mises.org. It's featured at LouRockwell.com. The secessionist impulse doesn't seem to be going away in Europe this month. The Wall Street Journal reported that the latest drive for secession comes from Sardinia. The leaders of the movement propose that the island, only part of Italy since the 1860s, be joined to Switzerland instead. Huh. The Sardinians have a tough row to hoe in convincing the Swiss to accept them as the newest Swiss canton. Sardinian, Sardinians do have a coastline to offer, however, but the whole episode illustrates yet again that the national borders drawn on the map over the past two centuries are beginning to outlive their usefulness. Mm. As with the Venetians, the Scots. Europe changed, you know, like things changed all the time in Europe at one point, and now they have been relatively static. static. Yeah. As with the Venetians, Scots, and the Catalonians, the matter of Sardinian secession and or annexation, uh, excuse me, and or annexation involves any number of referenda and discussions about self-determination. And in this case, as with most similar cases, one is left with the problem of determining how one can morally go about switching state affiliations without precipitating war or accusations of human rights abuses. The Europeans don't phrase it this way, but when they discuss the need for plebiscites and democracy, this is what they mean. Certainly, this problem was not at all alien to the laissez-faire liberals of the 19th century, including Ludwig von Mises, who wrote, quote, No people and no part of a people shall be held against its will in a political association that it does not want. Mises said further that the right of inhabitants of every territory to decide on the state to which they wish to belong. And if it were only that easy to simply yeah. decide that you want to belong to a new state or a different state. That's essentially what we're talking about here on Free Talk Live. I don't use the term state because I think I, I, I reserve that for an organization that claims a monopoly privilege on a given landmass. Um, and so if you want to change states, essentially you have to pick up and move physically from one place to another. But um, all I'm advocating for is that people be able to choose their governments. Um, and at the very, you know, even if that uh, has to, even if we have to evolve to that from, you know, different land masses, different areas, ge geopolitical areas, uh, you know, choosing this or that. So Sardinia, an island, saying, you know what, we don't want to be part of Italy anymore. We want to be part of uh, Switzerland. Well, uh, I think that's a step in the right direction. And Murray Rothbard explained Mises' position further, saying, quote, The right of self-determination in regard to the question of membership in a state thus means whenever the inhabitants of a particular territory, be it a single village, whole district, or a series of adjacent districts, make it known by a freely conducted plebiscite that they no longer wish to remain united to the state to which they belong at the time, but wish either to form an independent state or to attach themselves to some other state, their wishes are to be respected and complied with. This is the only feasible and effective way of preventing revolutions and civil and international wars, unquote. On a purely technical level, it's easy to imagine the sort of territorial plebis plebiscitary process. The problem one is left with in these cases, however, is what to do with minorities that oppose the secession or annexation by other states. Now, that is, you know, the, the real issue. That's the rub with, like, what happened in, uh, in Scotland, where it was darn close. The vote was real close. It didn't pass, unfortunately, but they almost were able to leave the, uh, the, the United Kingdom, and it didn't work out. But that did leave the big question mark of, well, is that really fair to the people, the 49%? If they had voted to leave, would that be fair to the people who wanted to stay? And the answer is no, it's, it's not fair. I mean, it's democracy, right? One side is going to be victorious in that circumstance. And what can you do about that besides come up with some new model where not everybody is forced to go along with the program, where where people are allowed to have two different you know, protection agencies or states or whatever you want to call them within the same land mass. We're not there yet, but we really should be there. Well, there's experiments being tried. I mean, even with the, the idea of your Shire Society is, is kind of an experiment to see, uh, I would say, in, in secession and as a fact of you're declaring yourself independent where you are. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I think that these experiments have to happen. You're right. That's exactly what the Shire Society is, in fact. It is a personal secession. When you sign the Shire Society Declaration, which you can do right now over at ShireSociety.com. I actually uh, put a new theme on the site a couple months ago, so it looks different. And uh, again, you can sign it digitally right there on the website. There's actually a printable version. You can print the declaration out. And it's just a one-page, real simple, personal declaration of independence. And the idea is you don't have to move anywhere to be a part of the Shire Society. You are leaving the state society. You are joining the Shire Society. It's a voluntary, consensual group of people who've come together who have the same values. We'll come back with more here in moments. You can share your thoughts more about secession in Europe at 855-450 free. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. We've been patiently waiting. Waiting while you tried to ignore us. Waiting while you acted like we didn't exist. Waiting for our chance to be taken seriously. The wait is over. GCN is available 24-7 at GCNlive.com. Navigate through news from your favorite hosts and download archives of past shows. Download the app on your smartphone or tablet or visit GCNlive.com for instant access and live streaming. GCNlive.com, the future of talk radio. Now at your fingertips. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Welcome. 
Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll free. A55 450 free. We're talking about secession. It is back in the news, and this time it is a place that uh, maybe I've heard of at some point, but I couldn't point it out to you on a map. Sardinia? Yeah, Do you so, know where that is? Yeah, actually, uh, I did that 23andMe uh, DNA test thing. Okay. found out that I'm part Sardinian. You're Sardinian. Yeah, apparently it's part Sardinian. Right on, uh, fellow Italian. Finally. <laughs> right. I'm the only one up here. Apparently there was some <laughs> Ethiopian Jew that uh, passed through Sardinia and, and humped somebody there that uh, um, came along too. So very interesting, nonetheless. Oh, okay, I'm looking at the map here. It looks like it's to the west of Italy. They're uh, just south of Corsica. So anyway, Sardinia apparently wants to leave Italy and join Switzerland, according to the story here over at Mises.org and LewRockwell.com. Uh, we can continue that here. Also want to invite you to our website at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy a variety of features completely free. And if you like Free Talk Live and you want to help support the show, you can contribute to the Bitcoin tip jar. Just go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. You'll find our Bitcoin address there and then send over whatever you feel is appropriate. Uh, Expresscoin.com, of course, is where you can go to get Bitcoins if you've been wanting Bitcoins. And there's the possibility they could keep going up in, uh, in value. It's been a real good last couple weeks for Bitcoin with the situation in Greece. Seems to have really been uh, encouraging people to move into Bitcoin, which means the price has been going up. So if you want to get some, go to expresscoin.com. It's the best choice for getting cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin. Litecoin's also up uh, quite a bit from what I understand. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money services business. You can get cryptocurrencies with a money order or check. Get started over at expresscoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. Again, that's expresscoin.com. They've even got a smartphone app if you'd like. And when you're checking out, you can use coupon code FTL and you'll get up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency with no fee at all. Expresscoin.com, coupon code FTL. As we continue here, we're talking about the uh, the right to self-determination, according to LouRockwell.com and Mises.org. On a purely technical level, it's easy to imagine uh, this territorial plebiscitary process. The problem one is left with in these cases, however, is what to do with the minorities that oppose the secession or annexation by other states. This is the claim made by nationalists who oppose the cession by Catalonia, for example. The nationalists assert that even if a majority were to prefer independence in Catalonia, minorities within Catalonia itself would be disenfranchised by secession. The nationalist solution in this scenario, therefore, is to disenfranchise the majority. But this solution is nothing more than an appeal to the central government to unilaterally settle the problem with force. In contrast, the proper solution lies not in centralization, but in further breaking down the size of each territory into smaller pieces to account for demographic realities and minority populations. This is one of the problems that really was essentially going on in Bosnia and uh, Serbia during the time of you know the, the war in the 90s. Um, you had very mixed populations, and what they essentially did was just, I mean, sadly, just kill Slaughter. everybody. Yeah, yeah, they just killed everybody who wasn't whatever they wanted, the majority was in those given areas it's one of the reasons that uh i think it's uh, uh um, croatia is like shaped like this funny boomerang shape mm. it's a big weird shape yeah, um and they're just trying to sort of draw lines around uh, different ethnicities and and make them the uh, majority in those areas and that doesn't serve everybody obviously um i i do see why they want to get down to smaller and smaller areas but that kind of shows um you know, shows the competition people want. I mean, people in one area don't need the same things as people in another area. Think about New York State. I think it's the best example out there. You have in New York State a, you know, big, uh, rural, relatively rich area up to the north and down um, in the city. It's just a it, it, this huge population center that needs something entirely different than what upstate New York needs. And the upstaters hate the fact that they're saddled with New York City. And and um, the New York uh, the New York Metro says, hey, we support the whole state. It's mm -hmm. all our money, which of course isn't entirely true, but I can understand why they feel that way. And it it's a very difficult situation to solve when you have these big land masses. People think that there's value, and there is value. There's some value in larger um, governments, and sort of uh, from a from a standpoint of homogeny. Uh, but 
you know, to some extent, I mean, think about California, for instance. California has rules that, um, because it's big enough, it passes on vehicles, it passes these rules as far as catalytic converters and stuff goes. That's just nationwide. They put it on everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, they put it on everybody's car because, well, we want to sell in California, so we might as well put it on every car. But if any community, no matter how small, can simply break off and join another state or remain independent, what's to stop single households from doing this? What's to stop, indeed? Rothbard asked the same question, and it brings us back to Mises' comments on self-determination. He wrote, quote, If it were in any way possible to grant this right of self-determination to every individual person, it would have to be done. This is impracticable only because of compelling technical considerations, which make it necessary that the right of self-determination be restricted to the will of the majority of the inhabitants of areas large enough to count as territorial units in the administration of the country. Unquote. In other words, anarchism is theoretically justifiable, although technically problematic. Mises no doubt has a point here, since there are economies of scale in both military and civil defense. It's debatable whether or not the technical consideration from the state's perspective cannot be overcome with technological innovation, however. Bureaucratic administration may have required a certain minimum size of departments and territorial units in Mises' day, but it's unclear that such problems are insurmountable today, given the decentralization and networking capabilities of modern administrative and communications technology. Nevertheless, from a sociological and economic standpoint, his concern about there being a practical floor to the extent which states can be broken up appears to be useful. After all, there's no denying that people like to join together in groups for a variety of purposes, not limited to military and economic ends. Now, the w- military is a very interesting one. Um, when you talk to people who believe in a small state, uh, what we term terminology we use for this is minarchists, and I'm not saying that I am not one of these people. I don't know, because we haven't been able to try other things out. Um, but... Uh, the what they'll say is is that you need the government for cops, courts, roads, the military. Sometimes they'll say the FAA and they'll add in a few other things. But the, you know, those are the core: cops, courts, the military, and roads. Mm-hmm. And the roads is absolutely ludicrous. We have roads all over this this country and many others that are private. Private roads work. They've worked for a long time. Anybody who says the road has not spent any time looking at this issue. And that's fine. I get that people don't spend a lot of time looking at the issue. They, uh, there's, I don't look at a lot of uh, particular areas in the world. Like, I know nothing about rocket uh, ships or brain surgery. Um, two areas of really smart people, right? I don't know anything about that stuff. But that doesn't – but I don't, I don't hold an opinion, right? Like I don't say, oh, well, this is how you should cut into this person's cerebrum mm-hmm. because I would be an idiot to say that. Um, so mm-hmm. um, like the area of roads – Not even the king knows that. Huh? Right. Well, I'm the king. I can rule over the person who cuts <laughs> into the head. But that doesn't mean that I would tell them how to do it because I am not a fool for mm-hmm. a king. Um, the, uh, but when it comes to uh, roads, so many people will have opinions as though somehow or another we – simply could not put uh, asphalt on the ground without the government. That's ludicrous. The gov- um, the, the military is, is a much more interesting question. There are plenty of states who've outsourced military work for other governments. Basically, Europe has outsourced its military to the United States. Um, but Liechtenstein has completely outsourced to uh, uh, you know its military. It has no standing military. Costa Rica, no standing military. There are uh, nation states all around the world that just don't have a military. Um, they have outsourced to somebody else. They expect protection from another organization, and that's all well, fine and dandy. I don't know if it's outsourcing. I mean, the as I understand it, the uh, Costa Rican state does have state police. But they don't have a military. That right. doesn't mean that you know the people of Costa Rica aren't going to defend their country if they're attacked. Sure, they could repel uh, perhaps Honduras or somebody who wants to come in with just their policing force. They probably have a you know certain amount of stuff to be able to do that. They certainly can repel bandits or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they're not completely hapless out there, uh, hapless and helpless out there. Um, well, Afghanistan didn't have a military, yeah. and they were able to repel the uh, the U.S. government I, pretty I think- effectively. I think it's gotten to a point where it's almost impossible to hold any country. Like even with the hugest military force in the world, we sure. we are you know this country's getting its its rear end handed to them over and over by a couple mountain men. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. So there, it's gotten to the point where um, 
I don't think traditional warfare that we learn about in all the movies is really how it works anymore. That's definitely true. Well, I mean, who who's really conquered another country and marched in and held them in in the in recent, recent hundred history? years? Yeah, I don't know. I could probably figure that out. So, surely I mean, it's a it, there's it's some, occurred. but they yeah. didn't hold it long. Yeah, um, the problem with Afghanistan was is that they they took the capital like you're supposed to do when you uh, you know when you have a war, but the capital didn't rule anything. Right, the guys in caves don't care. <laughs> right, if if Washington D.C. the weakness of the United States is that Washington D.C. rules everything. We're coming you back. You take it, you win. Eight fifty five, four fifty three. Hi, my name's Cody, and I want to tell you about Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is the world's first decentralized peer-to-peer protection system. We are developing a smartphone app that revolutionizes how people protect one another. Peacekeeper is a disruptive alternative to the status quo. Peacekeeper is a leap forward in protection services, allowing neighbors to respond far more quickly than police and fire services can. And this is a real community builder, too. Visit peacekeeper.org and join us. What are you doing? Looking for the best hotel value in America. That's easy. It's America's Best Value Inn. Really? Sure. They have over a 1,000 hotels across North America. Okay, that's good. They offer free Wi-Fi, continental breakfast, and HBO at most locations. That's even better. And when you join their free value club, you get 15% off, room upgrade, and late checkout when available. You're right. America's Best Value Inn is the best hotel value in America. Book a room today at abvi.com. Done. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $260. Antiwar.com reports in the past Iranian nuclear talks have had to be extended repeatedly as the early deadlines were woefully over-optimistic about the speed with which the deals of the term could be finalized. Those extensions were generally three to six months, which is what was expected this time around when yesterday's deadline was reached. Instead, the talks were simply extended one week to July 7th, which lends weight to reports in recent days that a major breakthrough on the talks is in fact close. While it does not necessarily mean that July 7th is a firm deadline, that they moved the bar out so little suggests something significant is close. Western officials are also confirming once again that Iran has met the terms of another interim agreement, this time related to the size of its low enrichment uranium stockpile. The formal IAEA report to that effect is expected in the coming days. At the same time, the Obama administration sought to reassure hawks who oppose a nuclear deal in the wake of the latest extension, declaring that the U.S. could walk away from the talks at any time if it wanted to, and would do so if Iran doesn't give them what they want. Such threats are almost certainly idle, but the U.S. has been keen, whenever a deadline is so close, to start trying to play hardball, even as it becomes increasingly apparent that they aren't going to add to the timeline. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. 
UPI reports a report released Tuesday by the Central Intelligence Agency reveals that the agency has a lack of diversity among its high-ranking workforce. The diversity and leadership study showed less than 24% of the CIA workforce and only 10.8% of its top ranks are composed of minorities. In the past seven years, minority recruitment for CIA jobs has dropped to 19.3% from a high point of 31.5% in 2008. Both the press release and a news conference on Tuesday confirmed Director John Brennan's plan to alleviate the lack of diversity in CIA leadership. The plan involves several measures. By October 1st, senior intelligence service officers will be assessed on their ability to create and maintain a diverse workplace environment. By 2016, all of these officers will attend diversity and inclusion training. These measures accompany action carried out prior to the study's release, including the establishment of a talent center of excellence, regular engagement with agency resource groups that represent the CIA workforce, and the requirement of supervisors to participate in a 360-degree feedback program. Brennan explained the focus on workplace diversity and promoting talent from within has been frequently deflected by global events that consume senior agency officials' time. The study included anonymous quotes from CIA officials that corroborated this explanation, and Brennan himself noted the U.S. military has outperformed the CIA in promoting minorities to top positions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Oklahoma is looking to resume executions as soon as August after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled last week that a drug used in the state's lethal injection mix was appropriate and legal. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt has filed a request with the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals to set execution dates for three death row inmates who were part of the suit before the U.S. Supreme Court. Lawyers for the inmates argued the drug, a sedative named midazolam, cannot achieve the level of unconsciousness required for surgery, making it unsuitable for executions. Florida, which had used the drug in 11 lethal injections, had placed a hold on executions while the case was before the court. It also plans to resume executions soon. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's a landmark day in the March for Equality here in America. Congress passed the Casinos for Fairness Act today, which gives every mistreated group in America the right to open a casino. It worked with Native Americans. It will work for the rest of the country. If our society has kept you down, you will get a casino to pull yourselves back up. Veterans will also have the right to open a casino as a replacement for costlier benefit programs. I think it'd be nice to have a casino. I mean, I'd rather still be able to walk, but, you know. While the majority of the country is handling the Casino Act as a step forward, many Native Americans are objecting to the law. We are still the most disadvantaged group in America. So all that we ask is that we be allowed to open whorehouses and start legally selling cocaine. The bill raised the question of whether immigrants should be allowed to own casinos. After much debate, the legislature decided that they would not, but they will be able to sell sliced mango on the street without a vendor license. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, welcome back to the program. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you in studio. Tonight you have me, Ian. And Taryn Lupo. And Mark. And we're going to go into your phone calls and thoughts. More on secession coming up here. Sardinia is the next place where secession is getting hot. People are talking about leaving Italy and joining Switzerland. Uh, and then the, there's an article over at Mises.org just talking generally about the idea of sort of using Sardinia as an excuse to talk about secession. Like, well, you know, why not? Why shouldn't we be able to go down to secession at the individual level? Why not secession at the house level? Why not secession at the neighborhood level, let alone the country level? Yeah, I mean, how do you do it without a geographic, you know, a location attached? And, and 
theoretically, I think that's great to be, you know, succeed in your mind. But realistically, we live here and, you know, what's yep. the compromise? Like, I would be happy. Maybe I could compromise the level of a county or maybe a town that I could just simply drive and avoid the towns I don't like. You know, something realistic like that. I don't know if I could succeed. I mean, us three in this room couldn't even agree on how to live. Yeah, that's Probably. true. But you don't need to necessarily, as long as people can sort of get along. There would have to be, obviously, there would have to be um, compromises made, but countries make compromises to live next to each other all the time. Um, I, I don't know. It seems it seems to me that a system could be set up where governments were organizations that were not tied to land masses. Um, all the services, they just provide, they're just organizations that provide yeah. service, right? And those services for really instance, crappy service well, i don't know i mean think about think about garbage for a second um i used i've lived in towns that have uh, garbage collection i've lived in towns that have no garbage collection mm -hmm. um or private garbage collection i should say and the pricing's pretty similar um basically you know it's it was like 20 bucks a month or whatever it was in both cases for garbage collection in the case of the town um, I don't have the, the city owning garbage collection. I don't have the choice of whether or not I don't want to get it. Yeah, that's um, true. Like I, you know, I don't get private garbage collection. I take mine to the uh, city transfer station and I drop it off there and I pay for a little sticker that lets me do that. And it's less, you know, I, I can do it's it. The on cheapest my, way to do it. Right? Yeah, I do it on their time, um, and it's you know, it, it it's a little more work for me. Yeah, but less, I like a little less convenient. I don't know. Is it, yeah, a little less convenient, but it's on my way anyway. Okay. And so it for me, it's not that big of a deal. Um, also, I never have. I was always having problems with garbage collection. Oh my God! You cut the sticks three and a half feet instead of three feet long. This was back when it was city. And run. the bundle weighs thirty-five pounds, not thirty pounds. So we're not going to be able to pick that up for you. Or oh my goodness gracious! You put a type three recycling in the type one and two bo <laughs> recycling yeah. box. Yeah. Dear me! And they don't even actually. I'm making this up because they don't even tell you what you did wrong. They just leave your garbage there, and like you're supposed to guess what happened. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, they're, they they turn good garbage men into sort of shiftless, angry, grumpy government bureaucrats. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. In, in fact, we'll go to Skype where Brian is on the line. <laughs> Brian Hagen in Kansas. Hey, Brian. Yay. What, what is going on, gentlemen? How in the world are you tonight? Hey, man. I haven't heard your voice in a while. Hey there, Brian Hagen. Welcome. <laughs> Mark Edge, it is always a pleasure to hear your voice. Ian, it is always a pleasure. Taryn Lupo. It's good to talk to you, buddy. But, guys, I want to tell you something. <laughs> this conversation is wonderful, but Taryn Lupo is your guest. You can't be using big words like secession. You're going to confuse him. I do. I just scratch my head like a monkey every time they bring it up. And I, I just look at him, and Ian gives me this paper to read of what I'm supposed to say. How about I was going to say, you were sounding way too intelligent without being scripted there, Lupo. <laughs> no, it's all scripted. <laughs> I knew it had to be. The only thing that Taryn Lupo knows is cats. <laughs> and 1970s TV shows. That's it, guys. You know, you nanu, nanu. Yeah, I mean, we basically had a whole show about that. We, before, we cranked out all these episodes just on 1970s TV shows. <laughs> before you book a guest, you need to consult with me so I can make sure you get the right guest for the right topic. If you were doing a show on cats or charo, coochie, coochie, Taryn would be your man. But a show on secession? He's the wrong guest, guys. <laughs> Brian, I am just sitting here listening, and I gotta wonder to myself: Did like, did you develop this radio voice of yours, or is it something you were born with? You know, actually, I I think I developed it. But what happened is, when I was two years old, my dad bought me a shoebox tape recorder. It was a Panasonic from Sears, and my mom said, "Ronnie, he's too young for that." And he goes, "He'll learn how to use it." Bought me a microphone too. So from two years old, I was practicing on this mm -hmm. thing. So I think that's just kind of how it developed. Did Thanks you for the compliment, Brian? <laughs> did you have a uh, Mr. Microphone? Do you remember those no. things that you could speak through your car and harass women? See, there you go. 1970s toy that was an absolute flop, but of course, Taryn Lupo knows all about it. If it has something to do with harassing women, you know he does. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're right. I mean, why he takes this stale 1970s toy and then turns it into women and female harassment. He's pretending to be Christine trying to scare the pants off of these gals. <laughs> Mr. Microphone just, was awesome. I can see him driving down the road. Road, you know, yelling at random women. It's awful. Actually, he'd be going, here, kitty, kitty, call, uh, to all the cats, because he's like a crazy cat woman. That's true. 
I'm how, adding yeah, how many cats do you have? He shows up here. I, he doesn't greet anybody. He goes straight to the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at yeah. all. But, the, but, but, of course, the dog rejects him because he's covered in cat hair. I mean, there's always just cat hair everywhere all over his body. It's horrible. I, don't I, think he's hairy. That's cat hair. Do you have cats, Taryn? I don't remember I, I don't right them. now. Uh, I, I had five in Savannah, but they stayed with the ex-wife. But you but did move into a but I moved clinic. to a veterinary clinic, and I borrow my neighbor's cat all the time. I let him in the house there and hang go. out with him. <laughs> it's pretty bad, but I like that, man. I have no responsibility, and I get to play with this cat that's not mine. Like I don't have you to feed it. it I don't have to pay for it, and yeah. I send it on its way. It's, it's the best. If uh, That's pretty much how I treat Brian. It is. That's exactly <laughs> it. Treats me like a little pet, but it's nice because he scratches me behind my ears and in other places, too, that I won't mention on the air. <laughs> Brian, anything else you want to share tonight? Just in case anybody wonders, this is what it's like working at a radio station all of the time. When you have these creative minds, they can't do anything but sort of... They, they, they push against each other. They, they find limits just, uh, you know, and in the process, it's things like this. You know, it's gay locker room humor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's constantly picking. It's, it's finding out the weak spots. There's sports. so much sexual harassment at radio stations. And music. <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. It's true. You're not I supposed to do myself. that. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that at workplaces. But <laughs> what are they going to do when it's a bunch of guys doing it to each other? Yeah. The, the women don't even come in the back anymore. <laughs> no. No, they do not. Gentlemen, I just wanted to call in and say how much I miss all of you. I didn't, of course, get to make it to nope. Port yeah, Fest this year, you know, due to personal sort of stuff. Right. But next year, I will be there. I love you guys so much. Taryn Lupo. I care about you some too. Uh, I love you long time. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Nobody Have wants to hear night. your excuses for not making a pork fest. Get out of here. <laughs> All right. Our toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. I have to admit, I didn't know what a plebiscite was. I had to look that one up. That's uh, essentially it's a vote. The vote. It's a yeah. big word it's, for vote. It's a local vote, though, right? Oh. Uh, it's the vote of the people, a democratic vote. I didn't know that. I thought they were talking about plebs. Well, it is. They are talking about plebs. That's the best the word ever. I love calling voting. people plebs. Well, they are plebs. <laughs> uh, plebis, plebiscite. Plebiscite is a direct vote by eligible voters to decide an important public question, such as a change to the Constitution, I've been secession, using... or a similar issue of national or regional importance. Okay, so yeah. it's like a big important vote. Yeah, I've talked to. Uh, I've used the term referendum um, to do that, but I think plebiscite is uh, is a good one. Yeah. Well, this this sounds like it's even more important than the average vote, right? Like a, an unusual vote. Yeah. Like. More important than even voting for president or something like that, right? So anyway, there you go. This you is on an issue. New. A plebiscite would be on an issue, right? Oh. Yeah, like a uh, change to the Constitution or secession or okay. a similar issue of national or regional importance. So when you call someone a pleb, then what are you saying? I thought that was like the great unwashed, the masses were plebs. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah, plebs are just people, basically voters, um, individuals. A pleb is an ordinary person, especially one from the lower social classes. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to George. He's on the line in D.C. Hello, George. Hey, guys. Welcome. Uh, uh, anyway, I got today I got my first official harassment from the police for being an Uber driver. Really? Ooh, all right, Ooh, all right, all right. We'll talk more hear. about it here. Stand by. You're calling us from D.C., and uh, you, even though you're on Skype, it's not the best-sounding Skype, so stand by. We'll uh, come back. It almost sounds like you're on a phone through Skype, uh, which, you know, I guess you can do. 855-450-FREE. We'll come back here with more and more about secession as well. There's uh, a little bit more detail here on just sort of the concept of secession, and then we'll talk more about Sardinia in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to tryancestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit tryancestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit tryancestry.com. That's T-R-Y ancestry.com. Tryancestry.com. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. 
In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from hiddenholster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The hidden holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to hiddenholster.com. That's hiddenholster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a hidden holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to hiddenholster.com. That's hiddenholster.com. The original hidden holster. If you're looking for work, the person you are applying to is probably so swamped with applicants that he or she is tough to reach. So call early in the day, before 8 a.m., before the palace guards arrive. You'll need your prospect's direct number, and here's a sneaky way to get it. Suppose the company's main number is 555-5000. You should call 555-501. Two. When someone says, good morning, Pam Johnson, you should innocently say, oops, somebody here must have written this down wrong. I was calling for Tom Frederick. What's his direct number? If the very next thing you hear isn't Pam giving you Tom's number, it may be, good morning, Tom Frederick. For more tips for job seekers and getting better results in all your day-to-day communication, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. We're back now with more Free Talk Live. We're talking secession or whatever you want to discuss. You can join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Just got a brand new router in here for the studio. I haven't had a chance to set it up yet, but uh, I'm excited about it. It's going to bring the studio into the this decade. I haven't had it. I haven't bought a new router since like 2008. Uh, really? So, yeah. yeah so it's time. I guess that's good. It says something good about the routers you've had, right? Yeah, I guess so. But it's time. It's time to move on into uh, the world of gigabit <laughs> capability. And so that's what I'm going to do. But I got mine at 20% off. And I could have probably gotten it at 25 but I just felt arbitrarily like selecting 20% as my discount on Purse. And it, it, uh, it got bought within 90 minutes of me making that choice. Purse.freetalklive.com can get you up to 25% off or more on your Amazon purchases. And there's no scam or like yeah. secret thing that you need to know or I, whatever. I mean, I spend enormous amounts of money on Amazon. How does that work? It's amazing. What does uh, it do? What you do is you go to purse.freetalklive.com. You sign up for an account, and then you on your Amazon account, you add whatever you want to buy to a wish list. So, are your books on Amazon? I, I suspect yeah. they are, right? So, sure. if I wanted to go order some Taron Lupo books, I could go and add those to my wish list. Then I copy the wish list. The wish list has like a little shareable URL, and Purse shows you how to, you know, do all this stuff. Okay. 
Uh, you copy that shareable URL and then you insert it into Purse and Purse sort of ingests your wish list items into Purse. And then they give you a little selector and you can select what percentage off you want on that product. So you can select, you know, low, 5 10% if you want. Uh, or you can select 20, 25%, and sometimes you can select even more off. If you've been around Purse for a little while, they'll increase the amount that you can select off. Now, the thing is, the more you select as far as a discount, the longer it may take to fill the order. Because what's happening is, once you choose your, your percentage discount, in my case, I chose 20%. It then goes into a sort of an order marketplace where people can then spend uh, their cash, their credit cards, to buy that item for you. You're paying... Uh, you, what you do is you put Bitcoin into an escrow account. Uh, so basically, you pay a fraction of the price of the actual amount, uh, the actual item at Amazon in Bitcoin, and then the other person is essentially buying your Bitcoin from you at a very steep sort of rate. Essentially, these are people that want to get Bitcoin, they want to get it quickly, but they don't want to go through the standard exchanges to get their Bitcoin. They want to, let's say, get Bitcoin with their credit card. Okay. So the way they do it is they buy the product for you as a gift. On Amazon, they send you that product. When you receive the product, you then release the Bitcoin to that person. So Amazon's gotten their full amount that they're charging, right? So if your book's 20 right. bucks, Amazon's getting all 20 bucks. Uh, the person who is is making the purchase is the one who's getting Bitcoin basically at 20% off. Got it. Or 20% above, excuse me, Bitcoin at 20% above the, uh, the sort of the spot price. Does that make sense? Yeah, and is there a third party that, you know, like, so I don't lose my Bitcoin. Does Purse handle? Purse handles the escrow. So okay. when, that's what I was trying to figure out. When you select the products you want on Purse and the discount you want, Purse then says, okay, send us this amount of Bitcoin. They then hold that until you receive the product. You don't release your Bitcoin to the to the buyer until you, re you right. actually get the product in your hands. And then you say, oh, yep, I got it. Click, confirmed, and then that person gets the Bitcoin. Oh, so very cool. you, by spending your Bitcoin, can save up to 25% or more. And I do it every time, 20 25%. It's no problem. Those things get purchased within a couple hours. I mean, big me items too, like a hundred, couple hundred bucks? Oh, yeah. All right. This, uh, this router Man, was I over $200. Well, now you know. Go now to, understand. Go to right. purse.freetalklive.com. When you get signed up through that link, uh, everything you buy from that point forward on Purse, Free Talk Live, will get a very small percentage of it. So it helps us out. You save yeah. big time on Amazon. It's the same great Amazon, same great prices and selection. You're just getting 20 to 25% off or possibly more or less if for whatever reason. They've got Purse Instant where it'll instantly fulfill an order for you as well. And so you can use that too. Very cool stuff. Purse.freetalklive.com. Let's go back to George. He's in Instant, DC. Where it'll instantly fulfill. Oh, oh hey, I think George actually, I don't know what that was. Something is playing my audio, and that's not George's fault. In fact, I think I know where it's coming from, so I apologize about that. That's the problem with running a computer with a bunch of different stuff going on here. All right, I think we've actually got George with us here in DC. Mm -hmm. You're, uh, you're, George, blah, blah, blah. you're a little uh, muffled or uh, distorted slightly. Uh, I'm not sure if it's your your cell phone. Yeah, it might be my cell That's phone. That's much better. You sound much better now. Go there ahead. There we go. Okay. What were you calling about? Yeah, anyway, I drop a passenger off at Dallas Airport, and then I go off into this parking lot uh, um, near the, not far from the terminal to wait for our next passenger because, you know, Beat's trying to drive all the way back to either Tyson's or D.C. to pick up another person. And all of a sudden, it's like uh, five minutes into it, not even that. A pu uh, airport police roll up, and apparently, um, say it's like they see me and um, get and they demand my license and all that, telling me that um, I'm not allowed to be working as a, especially as of today, um, working the airport as an Uber driver or Lyft driver. Why as of today? Uh, they just uh, some law goes into effect there where basically. Um, any anyone who runs a TNC, that's what they call a transportation network company, i.e. Uber or Lyft, um, has to um, wait for wait outside the airport to get a request by law because you know those taxi unions and all that they gotta get their um, first dibs and all that, and um, especially with Dulles, it's even worse there. And anyway, he, thankfully he did not give me a ticket, even though he could have. It said the tickets, the fines go go between one and five thousand dollars, right there. And he just gave me this um, piece of paper explaining the codes in, in the the new law, essentially. Like for example, get this: 
if a driver comes to the airport to pick up a passenger and in response to our request to transport that passenger, I have a record. Um, I have to write down the person's name, where they're going, the date and time on paper now, you know, to make available for the police if they want to, you know, really? investigate all that. This is just the airport? Yeah, uh, just the airports. Yeah, airports both fertile and ground dogs. for taxi cabs, and right. uh, you know it's yeah. the it's it's the best place to have. George, yeah, want- um, what about what? How is this so different than uh, the slug line that's been going on in D.C. for twenty years? What's that? I mean, what is a slug line? A slug line. When I was a kid, you used to be able to get in. Uh, D.C. has horrible traffic, so you used to be able to randomly carpool with people. Everybody would park their cars and get in what was called the slug line, and you would just pile in, you'd find out where someone was going, and they would put two or three people in a car, and you would take the HOV lane to save you from traffic. But some of these people would go right to the airport with the slug line. And uh, they've been doing this for 20 years. Uh, George will probably know what I'm talking about, right, George? I've heard of that, you know, um, but that's mostly um, carpool. Like, I used to ride with my dad to work a couple of times growing up as a kid, and he would pick up someone at the metro stop who was going into dc to get take that carpool lane like that because it required three people or more but i never done that as an uber or lyft driver so just to be clear the cops are saying you can you can service the airport but you have to start writing people's names down i'm a little confused um i cannot wait on, i cannot wait for a passenger on airport property oh uh, right but the taxi uh, cabs not, can yeah exactly uh, on, uh, only only uh, in uh, Dulles's case, only Washington Flyer. So that I, I, I even asked the cop, how does this not violate federal antitrust laws with this monopoly with only Washington Flyer allowed to pick up people? Shut well, up and get out of here. We'll <laughs> let the courts decide of that, son. I just do what I'm told. Yeah, if you want to tell us some more, in circles. If you want to tell yeah. us some more of the ridiculous restrictions, hang on, because it sounds like there's more. Uh, and so stand, stand by, George. Uh, more here in moments, how they're treating the poor Uber and Lyft drivers in D.C. could be coming to a city near you. Now, a twice as nice Twin Kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals Twin Kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the Twin Kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Free Talk Live. There's going to be no food by February. Oh, that seems a little extreme. I find that hard well, to believe. Well, watch it happen. Hope you find Christ. You oh, mean. good luck, buddy. Thanks. What really turned me away from religion was the fact that most of them are so intolerant and nasty. What do Your you mean? life will suck unless you find Jesus. Well, I had Jesus a long time ago, and he didn't really do anything for me, so I got away from that. Right, and I can tell you that uh, if you want to have if you want to have that attitude with people, yeah. like, Good well, you con- better find Christ, or you're going to burn in hell. Yeah. Then uh, you know. <laughs> Good luck converting people. Yeah, I really want to hang out with people like you, there, Keith. <laughs> I really want to hang out with people like you. So I'm sorry to those good Christians out there listening that that aren't like Keith, but it's the it's the loudmouths like Keith that uh, that do real damage to your religion and, and how people feel about it. Free Talk Live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you wanna move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, oof! I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring time into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is... You ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you tonight, you've got Ian. Darren B. Lupo. <laughs> and King Mark the First. And you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Please enjoy the features that we have waiting for you. We give them away. Now, if you're online and you're not protecting yourself, well, you really need to ask yourself why not. Maybe it's just because you haven't taken the time yet to go to proxpn.com slash FTL and download software that can help keep you safe from prying and spying online. Your very own internet service provider is probably saving every website you visit, every search term you enter. They may be saving that information for years in some cases. And, of course, giving it away to, oh, I don't know, government agencies, maybe selling that information to other companies so they can market to you. ProXPN.com slash FTL will stop that from happening. They encrypt your internet connection. ProXPN is a global virtual private network. Their software is available for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and you can go through Linux as well. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go and get the software. Get it installed, and you are protected from people that might want to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets or your ISP snooping on you. Uh, it's really easy. Get started at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Again, you can start for free, but you're likely going to want to upgrade to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth servers around the world that you can access you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites plus does, does that mean that i could uh basically go and get the download the shows i want to see without getting nasty letters from comcast is that what that means when you say privately torrent uh the private yeah well essentially uh so the private torrenting ability means that uh they are protecting your identity. So when you're torrenting, you're downloading files from various different places all around the world or wherever those files are coming from. But your IP address, if, you, if you're not using ProXPN, your IP address is on the list of those files that are, you know, that are being downloaded. So yours and all the other ones that are involved in that. So when you're using ProXPN, it's ProXPN's IP address that is listed. And ProXPN has a bunch of IP addresses in different countries. So if you're going to be doing private torrenting, I recommend that you use their Netherlands server instead of the U.S. servers. They will still, uh, it's still possible that ProXPN will receive a DMCA takedown notice if you're using their U.S. servers, but they will not give out information about their clients to uh, the companies that are sending those notices. However, it's just a safer thing to not use their U.S.-based servers if you're going to be doing that. Just then you won't get any kind of notices ever. Ever. So okay. So the, just don't use the U.S. The privacy protections in the Netherlands are better as far as uh, that goes. And so it's a Can't your cable um, provider realize that, like, oh, this guy's massively using bandwidth, but it says he's at a different IP address? I mean— can the they cable, put that together? They, a cable company could, in theory, block uh, VPN access, and I've heard stories about that 
happening out there, but I haven't heard about it with Pro XPN. Um, and I haven't, you know, they're not very consistent stories. So generally, right. generally the uh, cable companies can't block VPNs because a lot of it companies changes. use them. A lot, a lot of companies use them. So gotcha. if you want to connect to your company or your corporate network from your house and have access to all your company files and all that, generally it's VPNs gotcha. that are used to do that. And so if they just, if uh, internet service providers just decided we are going to block all VPNs, that would make them very unpopular with their clients. Right. So, they really so can't like do you it. couldn't pass big medical files, you couldn't pass you know large documents, things like that, because. They don't know if you're doing that or downloading Game of Thrones. They don't know what you're doing. It's encrypted, right. so they have no idea, and that's part of the, the fun of Pro XPN. The ISP is in the dark. You're using their service, but they don't know what you're doing anymore with it. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL and use code FTL50. You'll get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee and a great discount, 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy the annual account with code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. George is still with us. He's a Uber and Lyft driver in the D.C. area. And apparently just today, the 1st of July, there has been a new law that has gone into effect in D.C. that is prohibiting Uber and Lyft drivers from actually lurking on the airport property. This is what taxi drivers have done historically. They just sort of lurk and then they get, to, you know, real quick, somebody's going to hail a cab, right? You know, they're going to walk out of the airport. They're going to wave for a cab. And so they know what time the planes are coming in. Yeah. They're ready. And so in this case, you know, the taxi cab companies hate Uber and Lyft. They hate the fact that they're coming in and they're innovating in the, uh, the transportation business. They're providing new competition and new innovation, new ideas. And they hate that because they like things the way they've always been, which is the way it's always been is the government keeps new competition out of the taxi cab business. And so Uber and Lyft, of course, are saying they're not taxi companies. They're just connecting companies. They connect somebody with a car with somebody who wants a ride. The person with a car yeah. is uh, is the owner of the car, not the taxi or not Uber and Lyft. Uber and Lyft own no cars. So uh, these taxi cab companies have been fighting and fighting to uh, try to stop Uber and Lyft from doing their business. And now they've managed to get uh, yet another step in the direction of preventing Uber and Lyft from competing by preventing them from physically being on the property to wait for customers. So you would have to, George, uh, you would have to wait somewhere off of the Dulles Airport property. And, Reagan, too. And, and what's that? Reagan National also. Yeah, and Reagan. And then you would have to then wait for someone to order the Uber, and then you could come in to pick up. But even then, they're putting restrictions on you. Like, you have to write down physically with a pen and paper, write down the name and information of the, the passengers? Yep, yeah, and where they're going. Right there, right there it says here, uh, where is it? Um, oh, yeah, the person's destination, name, date, and time, and point of pickup. And this right there, they want that right um, as another, you know, slap in the face right there to make sure um, all the passengers just stick to taxis, apparently. And um, also, oh, we also have um so the have, taxi have, cab guys don't have to do that stuff. They can just pick somebody up. They don't have to ask them their name. They don't have to get any of these details. That's right. Oh, and get this um what was I going to say? Uh, we also forced to have some new special kind of registration, a nice little Star of David thing that we <laughs> stick stick on our license plate, you know, Whoa. where yeah, you know, that indicates that we work for a uh, What's it called? Transportation network company. That's you know what they call. Uber what happens if you go to the airport? I mean, some people do. You're doing Uber and Lyft for for a living, and you're probably doing it uh, many hours a day. But some yep. people just do it on the weekends, or you know, once in a while, or whatever. What happens if that person, for instance, I do Uber four hours a week on a Saturday uh, just to get a little extra money to go out drinking, um, then. Uh, but I've got to go for a business trip. Um, I'll be gone from Tuesday to Friday. So I go to the airport. I um, take my car in. I park it. And I'm going to go on a flight. Do I, Can I get in trouble uh, because no, I've got like, one of these little no, stickers? Um, no. Um, you have to be online, too, right there for Uber. As online, like you're willing to take passengers. Like how the cop um, found me was he had his own Uber app on the smartphone that, that was provided mm. by the airport police right there they did they gave each of the cops a smartphone with an uber app for passengers so that then you know they, they leave that on and they see the locations of all the um, yeah. uber 
driver is waiting to pick someone up, the available ones. So like they can that. target you. And then yeah. in this case, they pulled you over and gave you this piece of paper, which is telling you all these new rules that you're going to have to jump through these hoops if you want to do business at the airport. Yeah, he told me that if he catches me again, it's a $1,000 ticket and a wow. possible uh, notice forbidding trespassing saying that I'm banned from the airport. Now, what's Uber saying about this? Year. Because I know you've called before to say that Uber's sort of behind the drivers. They'll they'll help with legal fees and, you know, to, you know provide lawyers and things like that in certain circumstances. What are they saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. they're like, follow the law because we help write it. Oh, my <laughs> God. Yeah, so, but apparently... Um, I guess Virginia was just fighting a little bit harder with Uber than uh, most other localities or something like that, apparently. And um, and since it's just such a big market, Uber kind of caved and they're just like, well, as long as you're following the laws and all the registrations and stuff. Thankfully, uh, Uber is taking care of the actual registration as a um, TNC, i.e. Transportation Network driver. So I don't have to go to the DMV and get no papers. I don't have to register myself. They're doing all the paperwork. This is probably the beginning of even more regulations that are going to come down. George, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate you explaining it. It's absolutely horrible how they're treating Uber and Lyft drivers out there, preventing them from competing in the marketplace on an even uh, ground. There was probably some backroom deal that was like, okay, we'll give you the airport. Just let us have everything else. We'll come back with more here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other game before. A liberty oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius, ZOG.ninja, Co. FTL. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Genesis is defined as an origin, creation, or the beginning. Genesis Communications Network began with the mission of providing you with the kind of compelling content you're listening to now. And at GCNlive.com, you'll find a free archive of our nation's history, narrated by GCN hosts. Explore, share, and pass down to future generations. GCN is the future of talk radio, but we should always strive to learn from our past. Together, we are GCNlive.com. GCN. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. If you are successful at what you do, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, a business owner, or you have a great career, you understand the concept of protecting yourself. Well, are you protecting yourself, your family, and your assets with quality term life insurance? Consider these possible rates. A man age 45 non-tobacco user could obtain $1 million of coverage for as little as $75 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 10 years. We specialize in policies of five. $500,000 and above. A man age 50, non-tobacco user, may be able to obtain $500,000 of coverage for as little as $115 a month. And this rate is fixed for the next 20 years. We have great rates for smokers, too. Call the Term Lifeline now. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 800-872-0403. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about anything. We still have to talk more about secession coming up here. We had begun to discuss the uh, country of Sardinia, or the, I guess not a country, but uh, the area of Italy known as Sardinia, and this place would like to leave Italy, apparently, or at least a number of the people in Sardinia. There's a secessionist movement going on there. Uh, they also want to not just secede into their own country, which I don't know why they wouldn't want to do that, but they want to actually secede from Italy and then be annexed into Switzerland. So we can talk more about secession here in a moment. It's led to uh, uh, an article over at lourockwell.com and mises.org that just talks generally about the idea of secession. Secession not just at uh, the level of a country, but also down to the level of a neighborhood or a home or an individual. Just the, the general concept of seceding. We'll continue with that discussion here. The uh, hosts in studio tonight include me, Ian. Taryn Lupo. And King Mark the First. And our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We've got uh, Skype. You can Skype in here at username lrn.fm. So uh, let's see here. Back to the story over at lourockwell.com. There is no denying, writes the author here over at Mises.org. The author in this case is Ryan McMakin. There's no denying that people like to join together in groups for a variety of purposes, not limited to military and economic ends. The mega states of the modern world are held together by coercion, but cities, towns, and communities are naturally occurring phenomena that predate states. Moreover, just as I give up the freedom to talk loudly or adjust the volume when I watch a movie at a theater instead of my home, virtually everyone, even in a system of theoretically limitless secession, would give up at least some of his own personal prerogatives in the name of joining a municipality, league, or association that could provide legal and defense services. At the same time, individuals would be careful to keep the majority of power at the local level, since individuals can still exercise influence over localized governments. This is not the case in a huge state like the United States, where an individual who is not a billionaire has nearly zero influence over anything the national government does. But this raises a new question. If people choose to give up certain prerogatives to join with other cities and towns, isn't this true of all states? Haven't people voluntarily chosen to be a part of Russia or of the United States? And the answer here is no, because without a meaningful ability to make choices or provide a new choice via secession, no truly voluntary choice has been made. And yes. most of us didn't make a choice to be where we are. We were just pushed out of our mother's wombs on some arbitrary plot of land and then become the property of the people calling themselves the state. Yeah, generally, I think it's a pretty lucky thing to be born in the United States compared to you know where most people in the world are born. I'll um, give you that. Yeah, the United States is, is, is a superior place to be. However, what you need to consider is, is that if for whatever reason you want to switch, most uh, most countries in the world, if you don't, live within their borders, citizen or not, they don't tax you. The United States chooses mm. to tax you. If you make more than $97,000 a year, the United States chooses to tax you anywhere in the world. And if they say it at 97000 they could say it at seventeen. It doesn't really matter. They claim your income because you're a citizen, they claim your in they income. Claim. Yeah, income anywhere in the world. So you have to pay the income tax for the country you're in whatever the tax is, and then you have to pay the United States government above and beyond that. 
How Make in the me. world do they get the – well, if you want to come back – Ah, there's that. There's that. Yeah. So it, it, how in the world do they get the justification I can tell you, man, to do that? If I was planning on leaving the United States, I would be fine with not coming back. You know, like if, yes. if I had come to the point where I was ready to leave the United States – I would not be paying them any. Well, first of all, I haven't been, been paying income tax for more than a decade, but I certainly wouldn't start after I left the United States. Well, um, the hell with I, that. I, a lot of people want to go outside of the country and work and do whatever it is that they do outside yeah. of the country, and that's should be their prerogative as uh, citizens of a free country, supposedly. It's not a free country. No, there's no, there, nobody really thinks it is, do they? Does anybody listening actually think the U.S. is a free country? Yeah, and it's it, they really don't even let you leave now. If you talk to these people no, that try to get go. rid of their citizenship, it's ridiculous what they have to go through just to do that. And then if you do manage to get rid of it, you, you barely can even come back on vacation. If you talk to some of these people, it's massive hoops they have to go to see their family. So if you leave and you go through all those hoops and, and you uh, expate, man, you don't come back. That's a real pain in the butt. According to the story here, uh, as the author notes, states erect legal and practical barriers to extend their monopoly powers over a large area and over many facets of life in order to diminish choices and options. Likewise, states generally prohibit the creation of new states so as to further strengthen their monopolies. And we see that happening with Liberland, where there's this three square mile plot of land between Serbia and Croatia that neither Serbia or Croatia were claiming as their own land. So these libertarian types went in there, sank their flag in the dirt, and uh, said this is now Liberland. And now they've been getting arrested. There have been, as of a couple weeks ago, the last time we talked about it, there were 24 arrests that had already happened in Liberland. The Croatian government goons are arresting the people from Liberland. And so that's exactly what this guy's saying here, is they are trying to prohibit. Croatia is doing their best to try to stop Liberland from coming into existence. And they, you know, they don't want to have a competitive state right next door to them that's going to have near zero regulatory structure and just let anybody move in there who, you know, loves the ideas of freedom and is willing to contribute. They don't want that happening. They don't want to lose the productive class from Croatia to this, you know, little no man's land. That's really the question, um, the the difficulty that statists have. Um, if you uh, is, is sort of fine tuning the amount to tax people at. So, I mean, it's obvious if you want to pretend that you're a free country that you have to let people leave if that's what they want to do. If rich people, um, who are the ones that you want to leave the least, because they are the ones that everybody wants to tax the most, see a better opportunity in some place like uh, Jersey or uh, the Isle of Man or Liechtenstein or uh, the Channel Islands of uh, whatever Channel Islands they are, wherever it is that they wish to go, uh, Liberland, mm -hmm. um, then they're just going to pack up and go because they can afford to handle the costs of moving from one location to another and so if they do then you lose their productive ability you heard last year or the year before whenever the guy from uh, was it facebook severin i believe was his last name uh, decided that he was going to leave uh, give up his uh, u.s citizenship yeah or something like that leave the u.s in order to not have to pay the taxes and like politicians are railing against this guy he got rich here and now he's going to take his money and go someplace else I mean, it's it, they're just just railing and railing on it, and well, I mean, do you run a service organization or do you run a human tax farm? The latter. Because if you run a human tax farm, then sure, you can claim somebody's productive labor forever and ever. You can say, "My God, I made you what you are," then you mm. you 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 owe me forever. Well, uh, that's not. It's not that. Citizenship shouldn't be that relationship. If I want to go float on the South Pacific seas for a little while, I should be able to do that. And the United States isn't providing me with crapola, so I shouldn't have to pay them for anything. I don't there. want their services. Well, the United States government's services really amount to what? Forced Social Security, which I don't want. It's a terrible return. Mm -hmm. uh, Medicaid or Medicare, which I don't want because um, you know they seem coercive and um, irresponsible to me. And blowing up people around the world. I don't want that either. They don't. Yeah. I mean, they really don't provide much else that certainly that the states couldn't do. So to the extent to which one is voluntarily subject to a civil government moves along a sliding scale. At one end of the scale is a one world mega state where no choice is possible at all. At the other end of the scale is a totally stateless society. 
Most, if not all, of human history has been characterized by civil governments that fall somewhere in between. Some civil governments are very large and very coercive, like ours. That is, they are quintessential states. Some governments are very small and very decentralized and are much less state-like. We were talking to Liechtenstein. You can opt out of local governments. Um, some people are moving to Liechtenstein from the Mises uh uh, Mises organization that you can opt out of local government there if that's what you want to do. Yeah, the whole Liechtenstein thing sounded pretty amazing. We talked to one of them at uh, the Porcupine Freedom Festival. I don't, I don't remember which night it was, but uh, it's somewhere it was in on the Wednesday archives. night. Uh, so these later governments must compete with numerous nearby options for citizens and capital. Naturally, a world with fewer states and very centralized states offers few options, which in turn means fewer choices for persons, cities, towns, and communities. In spite of this, we're still, or we still sometimes encounter the bizarre argument that secession is bad because secession creates a new state. This would be an argument from a you know purist libertarian or something, right? Like, oh, we can't have secession because yeah. that will add a state to the world. I find it fascinating when people argue, uh, libertarians, uh, people who, who want more freedom in their lives, argue against the free state project because it has the word state in yeah. it. Really? That's what your argument is? Those people are just internet debaters, man. They're never going to amount to anything. They're never going to pick up their life and move to New Hampshire. If they were a debater, they'd have something better to debate. We're going to come back yeah. with more. There's a little bit more on uh, what's going on in Sardinia. That's where that's the reason that we started this whole conversation. Sardinia is wanting there are people there that want to secede into Switzerland. They want to be annexed into Switzerland after seceding from Italy. Uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about that and you can bring up anything that you want here on Free Talk Live. Hi, my name's Cody and I want to tell you about Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper is the world's first decentralized peer-to-peer -peer protection system. We are developing a smartphone app that revolutionizes how people protect one another. Peacekeeper is a disruptive alternative to the status quo. Peacekeeper is a leap forward in protection services, allowing neighbors to respond far more quickly than police and fire services can. And this is a real community builder, too. Visit peacekeeper.org and join us. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photos, cell phones, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $260. Antiwar.com reports in the past Iranian nuclear talks have had to be extended repeatedly as the early deadlines were woefully over-optimistic about the speed with which the deals of the term could be finalized. Those extensions were generally three to six months, which is what was expected this time around when yesterday's deadline was reached. Instead, the talks were simply extended 
one week to July 7th, which lends weight to reports in recent days that a major breakthrough on the talks is in fact close. While it does not necessarily mean that July 7th is a firm deadline, that they moved the bar out so little suggests something significant is close. Western officials are also confirming once again that Iran has met the terms of another interim agreement, this time related to the size of its low enrichment uranium stockpile. The formal IAEA report to that effect is expected in the coming days. At the same time, the Obama administration sought to reassure Hawks who oppose a nuclear deal in the wake of the latest extension, declaring that the U.S. could walk away from the talks at any time if it wanted to, and would do so if Iran doesn't give them what they want. Such threats are almost certainly idle, but the U.S. has been keen, whenever a deadline is so close, to start trying to play hardball, even as it becomes increasingly apparent that they aren't going to add to the timeline. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. Fans are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the Fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports a report released Tuesday by the Central Intelligence Agency reveals that the agency has a lack of diversity among its high-ranking workforce. The diversity and leadership study showed less than 24% of the CIA workforce and only 10.8% of its top ranks are composed of minorities. In the past seven years, minority recruitment for CIA jobs has dropped to 19.3% from a high point of 31.5% in 2008. Both the press release and a news conference on Tuesday confirmed Director John Brennan's plan to alleviate the lack of diversity in CIA leadership. The plan involves several measures. By October 1st, senior intelligence service officers will be assessed on their ability to create and maintain a diverse workplace environment. By 2016, all of these officers will attend diversity and inclusion training. These measures accompany action carried out prior to the study's release, including the establishment of a talent center of excellence, regular engagement with agency resource groups that represent the CIA workforce, and the requirement of supervisors to participate in a 360-degree feedback program. Brennan explained the focus on workplace diversity and promoting talent from within has been frequently deflected by global events that consume senior agency officials' time. The study included anonymous quotes from CIA officials that corroborated this explanation, and Brennan himself noted the U.S. military has outperformed the CIA in promoting minorities to top positions. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports Oklahoma is looking to resume executions as soon as August after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled last week that a drug used in the state's lethal injection mix was appropriate and legal. Oklahoma Attorney General Scott Pruitt has filed a request with the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals to set execution dates for three death row inmates who were part of the suit before the U.S. Supreme Court. Lawyers for the inmates argued the drug, a sedative named Midazolam, cannot achieve the level of unconsciousness required for surgery, making it unsuitable for executions. Florida, which had used the drug in 11 lethal injections, had placed a hold on executions while the case was before the court. It also plans to resume executions soon. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The dangerous winter storm Rocky is expected to pummel the Midwest throughout the day, with meteorologists predicting the blizzard will hit Kevin Hodges of Joliet, Illinois the hardest, given the way his year's been going. Yeah, we're stocking up on everything. I think school's going to be canceled. We're just glad we're not Kevin right now. Joining us now is Jordan Blake in Chicago. Hello, Jordan. Just how crippling will this storm be for Kevin? Well, we've already seen a lot of damage. Motorists in Kansas trapped in their cars on the freeway. 
That's nothing compared to the emotional damage Hodges can expect. Having to deal with a sick cat, frustrating new hours at work, and a confusing breakup all in the past six months. You know, we're getting reports that he recently loaned $600 to a friend who has no intention of paying him back and slammed his finger in a car door last month. Does the National Weather Service have any advice for Kevin today? Not much he can do. This guy is really vulnerable right now. Authorities are recommending that he just stay indoors and think about his mistakes. That sounds like good advice. You know, he looks like a real sad piece of shit. Stay warm out there, Jordan. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. We're here kicking off hour number three, and we've got time for you if you want to join us. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've been talking a lot about secession tonight, but also had a call from uh, one of the Uber drivers to inform us that things are getting much worse for Uber drivers who want to service the airport in D.C. And, of course, there's actually a headline recently that Uber executives have been arrested in France, and there have even been taxi cab people who've been attacking from what I understand, Uber drivers in France. So, like, these Uber guys have really had a tough time trying to just do some business and give people rides places. So you can talk about anything you want here. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Taryn P. Lupo. And King Mark I. So just to jump it back here, we've been talking about secession. Sardinia, which is an island to the west of Italy, it is part of Italy and has been apparently since the 1860s. Uh, some of the people in Sardinia. Is that when Giuseppe Gibraltar um, put sort of put uh, Italy together? I have no idea. Yeah, I know. You went to the smart school in town. I just thought maybe you might know. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really do good in uh, or do very well in uh, geography. What'd you do good in? I said I didn't do very well in <laughs> geography. Well, fine. What did you do well in? Um, I passed. <laughs> I don't know. Nothing. Computers. There you go. Okay. Uh, so anyway, let's continue here. Here's the uh, the story from LouRockwell.com and Mises.org. Garibaldi, so, that's his name. Uh, let's see. In a world with fewer states and very centralized states, that offers few options, which in turn means fewer choices for persons, cities, towns, and communities. In spite of this, we still sometimes encounter the bizarre argument that secession is bad because secession creates a new state. But just as consumers of pizza benefit when a new Pizza Hut opens down the street to compete with Domino's, consumers of defense services and legal systems benefit when a new competitor becomes available in their neighborhood of states. If Domino's Pizza managed to use force to prevent any other pizza chain from opening up in town, that would clearly be a bad thing. And that's actually exactly what the taxi cab companies are trying to do after the fact to Uber and Lyft, is stop them from doing business and competing. Likewise, when a state uses force to prevent the creation of a new state or to prevent the movement of a region from one state to another, we can see this is undesirable because it limits choice, freedom, innovation, and all the good things we associate with a lack of monopoly power. So, can Sardinia morally secede? Ryan McMakin writes, In the unlikely event that Switzerland declared it would love to welcome Sardinia into the Confederation, Italian Unionists would still oppose secession on legal and sentimental grounds. They would claim also that Sardinia cannot secede because some Sardinians wish to remain a part of Italy. If a majority of Sardinians actually wish to secede, though, then the Italian Unionists are making the arbitrary claim that most Sardinians should be forced to remain in Italy because some Sardinians say no. And this is a, yeah. This is a very difficult uh, situation. So, um, and I I'm caught on this the horns of this dilemma too. I don't think that there um, that any Italian uh, nationalist Sardinians should have to be ruled by Switzerland if the rest of the Sardinians want to go and be coupled up with uh, Switzerland or right. be their own country or whatever. I don't think they should have to do that. Should, they should be able to choose whichever government they want to have. But it gets. Uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> it would be interesting to see what would happen if Sardinia said, all right, well, we're going to let the people who want to go to Switzerland go to Switzerland, the people that want to be their own nation be their own nation, and the people that want to be um, Italians be Italians. And that we'll would see be how this amazing. Goes. If that actually happened, that would be a world first, wouldn't it? And uh, th That I know of. 
And, of course, the power of the Italian state would be hung as a constant threat over the heads of secessionists as well. The answer to this conundrum is not to simply accept the might-makes-right argument, of course. The answer is to, therefore, break Sardinia itself into smaller pieces. If the people of North Sardinia want to secede and the people of South Sardinia do not, then our problem has been solved. Even after this division is made, there are sure to be disagreeable minorities. But with each reduction in size of the territory in question, the amount of choice for those in the unfortunate minority increases. A move to South Sardinia from North Sardinia to escape the secessionists is far less disruptive to one's life than a move from Sardinia to the Italian mainland for the same purposes. There's no perfect and clean method of breaking down nation states. But as the Americans, the Irish, the Chechens, and many others could tell us, state intervention to prevent secession is often the bloodiest and messiest option of all. Indeed. So, good luck to Sardinia. I don't know if it's going to come to a vote or what the status of this movement is over there. But if you are tapped into it, please clue us in. Our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Let's talk to Eric. He's in Minnesota listening to WNMT. Hello, Eric. Hey, how are you guys doing? Welcome, sir. Go ahead. Um, it was always my belief, like, United Nations kind of promotes national self-determination. So um, I think my opinion is if uh, the democratic majority of any region or province or autonomous region or whatever you want to call it, or state or city, if it wants to secede from... Uh, you know, it's it's supervising ed- entity. Then it should be able to absolutely. Um, At you know, what percentage, promote, though? Fifty-one percent, sixty-six percent, seventy-five percent. We've seen different numbers. I would say probably sixty-six percent. I think a two-thirds majority, really. But in in something like that, I think that the election itself, or the plebiscite, or whatever you want to call it, I don't think it should be limited to just adults because you know hmm. you're not only choosing your future like you would be with any election but um i think anybody with a head on their shoulders um should be allowed to vote which includes people probably 12 years yeah. of age and up you know they should be able to decide what country and what language they want to speak and be part of and do you think the option ever would be that uh hey i'm part of the 33 percent that doesn't want this can i just live here and not be part of any country yeah, you know what? You've got a good point there. I think that you should be allowed to, you know, maybe be a non-resident or something. Um, you know, there's cases like Kosovo where that really wasn't an option. Um, I think actually what happened for a lot of the people there who were not ethnic Albanians who might have been, you know, Serbian or something, a lot of the time I think they were killed. So, you know... Um, you should be in in a modern world. You should be allowed to, you know, decide who you want to be a part of. And if you don't want to be a part of anybody, well, that should be an option too. I am totally on board with that, Eric. Thank you for sharing your thoughts here tonight. And hopefully, hey, question for you: How's the secession movement yeah. there in Minnesota? Um, it depends on what part of the state you're in, really. You know, Southern Minnesota has their own basic. You know, essential entity and identity, I should say. In northern mm-hmm. Minnesota, it's different too. You know? But are there groups? Are it's there uh, are there activist groups that are that are promoting the idea of secession in in Minnesota? It's just more of a tongue in cheek talk thing. It's not really a, I would say, like a party. You know, mm-hmm. um, according to Wikipedia, there is, but they don't have a website, so I really, really don't know. Eric, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate it. What state has the most interest, active interest in secession? I don't know. There's a, there's some li- lively movements in Vermont. Uh, Hawaii, I believe, has one as Hawaii's well. Hawaii's pretty active, as is Alaska. Alaska, yeah. but yeah. I remember in the 90s. New Hampshire, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's starting to be talked a, about, a lot more in New Hampshire, but I, I think it was the 90s in Alaska. They were actually getting pretty organized and serious, and then— uh, the leader of the secessionist movement just disappeared overnight. Do you Uh-oh. guys remember that? No. Um, oh, yeah. They, Did they show the, up the ever party. again? No. He disappeared, and people were – there was a big campaign. It was like, where is this guy? Oh, my. I can't remember his name, but I'm sure somebody, uh, one of our listeners, can figure it out. But, uh, yeah, the secession movement got that organized and serious that they, they got pretty scared about it for wow. a bit in Alaska. And then it just died back down 
here in uh, New Hampshire, actually, we've got Independence Day coming up. And last year on Independence Day, activists in different parts of the state did secessionist outreach. We have these flyers from the Foundation for New Hampshire Independence, which is sort of like a, a think tank, an intellectual group advocating for secession. But they don't use the word secession. It's a really nice flyer they've printed up. It's all about New Hampshire declaring independence. Uh, and I think that's a better term to kind of communicate to people. It basically means it is, secession, yeah. but it's a nicer way of, uh, of putting it. And so I suspect we're going to be out there again. Like, you know, they've got a baseball game here in Keene that happens on Independence Day. So a great opportunity to stand out front and hand out these flyers. I'm folks. for more independence. I don't think secession's anywhere on the horizon. I, I we gotta disagree. Talk about it. Yeah, I agree. We, we've got to talk about it. We'll make it real. There's more coming up here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Every summer we go to Canyon Woods. Love getting outside. Love the hiking. Hate the itching and irritation from poison ivy, bug bites, all the things that keep me inside. So I need something strong. Cortisone 10 Intensive Healing is clinically proven with the strongest non-prescription itch medicine available for fast, long-lasting relief of itching and irritation with seven moisturizers to help heal skin. I finally have the relief I need. Hey, Jan, check this out. On my way. Cortisone 10. Feel the heal. Discover how deep your American roots go for free this 4th of July weekend. Go to TryAncestry.com to get free access through July 5th. Visit TryAncestry.com anytime this Wednesday through Sunday, and you'll have free access to our collection of records from the original 13 colonies and with a new visual story experience. Celebrate this 4th of July and take advantage of this free access weekend. Visit TryAncestry.com. That's T-R-Y, Ancestry.com. TryAncestry.com. Extend your life with Extend Ovite. Hey, neighbor, what are you doing digging? You had a heart attack last year. Oh, I know. I was told no more hard labor. Then why are you digging? Well, I've been taking Extend Ovite. It's been approved to help my heart. Extend Ovite? Is that a new drug? No, not a drug. It's uh, more like an herbal combination made from garlic and cayenne. Herbal? How can that help? Well, actually, we've taken herbs for thousands of years, and Extendivite is doing the job for me. Does your doctor know about Extendivite? Yeah, my doctor knows, and he said it seems to be working for you, so don't stop taking it. I feel great taking Extendivite. I don't want to stop. To order, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822, or visit our website at heartdrop.com. Extend your life with Extend Over. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at SurvivorMax.com. 
While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Hey, we're back with Free Talk Live. We've got time for you if you want to join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We may actually find out more about what happened in Indianapolis today with the very first church service for the Church of Cannabis. Damo Freeman from CopBlock.org was on hand. Uh, I did just talk to him a few moments ago, so he should be calling in here at some point. If you want to continue to discuss secession, you're welcome to join us for that discussion. Uh, And also, I was on national news media this morning, uh, the Today Show it's an NBC national morning show, newsy kind of talky, talking heads show. And my, myself uh, and Garrett Ian were, were featured on that program. And we can play the audio here because, Taryn, you haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't. And today's show, I mean, I don't watch mainstream TV, but that's a big player. It's a man. big one, yeah, that's for a, sure. That's, I mean, people... His parents actually watch that still. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Mark, tell me about Peacekeeper, though, first. Yeah, Peacekeeper is an app for your Android or iPhone that allows you to network with people around you to provide emergency services to each other um, to augment um, or perhaps replace uh, existing uh, emergency services. So, if, for instance, think about it for a second. Um, if I'm your next-door neighbor and you send out a an alert via the app on your phone that you're having a fire issue, I can be there a heck of a lot faster with a fire hose than the fire department can. Mm-hmm. Um, by hose, I mean a garden hose. And in, in many cases, if you can respond early, these, um, the, it, you know, it, you can take care of the issue quickly. Um, or if for there's a break-in or something like that, um, you know, somebody, somebody next door or just down the street uh, can get there a heck of a lot faster. Peacekeeper uh, 1.0 was a success, but it had some bugs and that need to be worked out, so they're looking to create Peacekeeper 2.0, and they're looking for support from people um, who want to get some benefits and a deeper relationship with Peacekeeper. Go to PK, PK as in Peacekeeper, to see their Indiegogo campaign, excuse me, pk.freetalklive.com. It's the Indiegogo campaign at pk.freetalklive.com. We shortened it up because the Indiegogo campaigns have these long, complicated URLs that nobody would be able to uh, get over the radio. pk.freetalklive.com. All right. Uh, So the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. Here is the package from NBC's Today Show that aired this morning at 740. As many Americans were getting ready to head out the door to go to work, they caught this. 39, time for a new Rawson report. And this morning, total strangers trying to save drivers from getting parking tickets and the city officials who are trying to stop them. Today, National Investigative Correspondent Jeff Rawson's here with more on that. Hi, Jeff. Hey, guys, good morning to you. Look, we've all been there, right? You run into the store to grab something and you forget to feed the meter. You walk out a few minutes later and boom, that's in your face. A big red time expired. And worse yet, there's a ticket on your windshield. It can ruin your day. But fear not, the Rawson's Robin Hoods are here to save you, pulling out bags of change and saving complete strangers from tickets. So why are there acts of kindness landing them in court? They're the new Crusaders. <laughs> One minute. Oh, that's a save. Yes. Hitting the streets. You just saved this guy. With one goal. Oh, here's one that's expired. To stop you from getting a ticket, paying it forward, feeding expired meters for complete strangers. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. They call themselves the Robin Hoods. How much did you put in? Uh, one nickel, bought them 15 minutes. This is very well produced, by the way. I mean, they even got the little music soundtrack underneath it. Slick. (laughs) Nice graphics. So they did a good job on this. Following meter maids in Keene, New Hampshire, pumping meters with coins before officers can write them a ticket. We'll give them 36 minutes, three dimes. That's not all. The Robin Hoods always leave behind their calling card. Robin Hood, King of Keene, and on the back it says your meter expired. However, we saved you from the King's Tariff. People love it when they get these things. Why do you do this? I do this because people feel good when they get a note from Robin Hood of Keene. They know they've been saved from getting a ticket. I'm going to give this car a little extra since I know that they are probably going to be in this spot for an extended period of time. Wow, you just gave them an hour's worth. Mm-hmm. But do they go too far? Do they pay you dun, to walk dun, back dun. and forth like that? <laughs> the city suing them, saying they harass the meter maids as they follow them. 
Go back to your truck and drive away. I'm doing my job. Okay. Do you think you harass these car no. enforcers? Criminal harassment is a that's a criminal charge. And if we were conducting harassment, they could arrest us for that. And they haven't. And they have not done that. Simply put, what do you think this lawsuit's about? It's about the revenue. They want to protect their thousands of dollars that they had coming in, and they're upset. We sat down with the mayor of Keene, Kendall Lane. The issue is about the fact that they're harassing oh, the parking I'm, enforcement officers. The theory says again. it right on, on national TV. television. Yeah. He makes a, he's a lawyer too, mm -hmm. he makes a libelous claim that puts him um, and the city of Keene in complete jeopardy. You have to harass somebody, you need to threaten them. And this lawyer. No, you don't. Uh, you uh, t criminal harassment. The definition of that, as I understand it, is if you are told to stop talking to someone, and they, and then you continue to do so. That is criminal harassment. So if Mark, you were to tell me, Ian, I never want to hear from you again, and then I continue to call you and you know try to speak to you, that's criminal harassment. I thought it included a, a, an aspect of threatening, though. There's yeah. Doesn't there have to be a violent component mm, or something? I don't like think that? so. Okay. No. I'll try to pull up but the RSAs for it. Does if you it want. count when they're public officials? No, it does not. All right. Uh, you Important. can't. I don't think you can threaten necessarily a public official, uh, but you can certainly say pretty much whatever you want to them as far as your opinion about their job or what it is that they are doing. And if the public official, in this case the parking enforcer, says, "Ian, I want you to stop talking to me," they can say that. Well, then, but that's you can fine. ignore them. You're right, but that's official oppression, essentially. I mean, you have to be able to appeal to your government, and this. Right. Uh, I mean, it's not like these parking, these meter maids are just wandering around town, uh, looking at the sky and not bothering anybody. They're handing out written threats to have your car confiscated unless you come up with a ransom. These are ransom notices. Now, that's their their property. Um, essentially, it's the government's property, um, and so they, they claim the right to do that. But what you need to consider is, is how did they go about it getting this property? And how does the citizen, how does the average individual manage to change how the city does business in the area of, of parking? Well, you can go and you can beg them to do things, but they don't listen they don't to you care. guys on anything. No. They've never listened to you guys on one thing. So if you want to get something changed, you have to go to direct action. And I, this is a way to do that. It's probably the best form of activism I've seen in years because Thanks. you're really, yeah, I mean, it just really puts them in a spot that they, it exposes what, what it's all really about, that it's just about revenue. It's not about... Um, well, I mean, you're being a good citizen. You're being a good Joe. Well, and, and you gotta you you gotta give them credit though. Thank goodness the city of Keene filed that lawsuit because had they not sued us, we'd never be on the Today Show. This would never be a national story if city of Keene had not filed that suit against us. Actually, two suits. Yeah, I think this form of activism is just awesome. We gotta find more stuff to do like this. Criminal harassment. Uh, this is the definition from New Hampshire. Okay, so there's gonna be differing definitions in different states, and there's you know section one A B C D E F. Section F is the one that's relevant here, Mark. With the purpose to annoy or alarm another, having been previously notified that the recipient does not desire further communication, communicates with such person when the communication is not for a lawful purpose or constitutional protected. So pretty much if you tell me to stop talking to you and I continue to do it, they'll say that I'm doing that with a purpose to annoy and therefore it's not lawful. It's, it's still a libelous statement. I mean, to claim oh, that you're yeah. harassing. Um, oh, he's totally oh, libelous. Oh, yeah, that's... Because... Why don't speaking, you guys sue him? Because, Mark, speaking to a government agent is constitutionally protected. So that's the exception here. But right? why yeah, don't I mean, you this guys is activism. Him? I don't know, Mark. Find me an attorney that's willing to do that, and we'll we'll talk about it. Talk the to toll free number tonight: eight fifty five four fifty free. The guy oh. who's taking the case is a criminal uh, kind of. He, he doesn't handle cival cases like that generally. I, so, I want to hear the rest. What yeah, did, we'll get uh, to that coming yeah, up here in moments. Say? It's Free Talk Live. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855 340 SAVE. That's 855 340 7283. Results will vary from case to case. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call reputation.com at 1 800 831 0 
800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Keenvention is coming up October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. Explore Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel from 2013 on. This year, Activist of the Year Daryl W. Perry and Chris Cantwell will be keynoting. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenevention this October 30th through November 1st. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or pay with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallo Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenevention.info. Visit Keenevention.info for more speaker announcements or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenevention.info. Keenevention.info. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. we got time for you if you want to join us here. We're playing the audio track of the video that was featured on the Today Show this morning. A uh, four-minute-long segment about Robin Hood of Keene. And, of course, you know, it's uh, showing up all over the place. People are seeing uh, my, uh, seeing me and uh, Garrett Ian from Robin Hood of Keene. We were the two people they focused on in the report. You can see it for yourself right now over at freekeen.com. It is the top story there on the website. Please feel free to share it around. And, of course, all of this is coming after the Supreme Court decision that ruled mostly in favor of Robin Hood of Keene. Robin Hood are the people who feed uh, parking meters in advance of the uh, parking enforcer, so therefore preventing people from getting tickets written. And that has resulted in the city of Keene suing the Robin Hooders, ultimately mostly losing. That is, the city's mostly losing. Uh, They mostly lost in Supreme Court at the New Hampshire Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did kick back one detail to the Superior Court for the Superior Court to relook at, which was the question of the injunction. The city wants to create a 50-foot radius, or originally it was 50 was their request. Then they brought it down to 30. Then they brought it down to 10 to 15 feet. And then eventually at the Supreme Court, they basically said, we'll take whatever you give us. Uh, So they kept whittling down the amount that they wanted as far as this radius, this protection zone, this sort of anti-Constitution 
zone around each of the parking enforcers. So basically what the Supreme Court said when they kicked that part back was they said that the court made a, an error in law when it kicked out the question of the injunction because it had kicked out the rest of the case based on freedom of speech grounds. And the Supreme Court said, well, you need to rule separately on the request for the injunction. You can't use the fact that you kicked out the rest of the case on freedom of speech to kick out the injunction on the same reason. You have to rule specifically on the injunction. So it's going back to Superior Court. They will rule on that. And then whether or not the city of Keene is going to appeal on that ruling is another question. This how could much, go on for another couple of years. How much do you think the city's already spent on this? Oh, I would guess 50000 I I would say that's conservative because after the first suit or after the Superior Court level, before it went to su yeah. Supreme Court, the city manager admitted to having spent at least $20,000 on private attorneys to take that to the Superior Court level. So you figure probably doubling that at wow. least to go to the Supreme Court. Let's go to your calls and thoughts. We'll get to the other half of the video here in a moment. We've got Ademo Freeman with us. He's calling from Indianapolis. Hello, Ademo. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the time to have me on, and congratulations on the uh, free publicity. Thanks, awesome. man. Thanks. Great Couldn't have done hear. it without the city of Keene. So uh, you're in Indianapolis. You just left New Hampshire after the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Pretty much straight shot out to Indy uh, for this first, first church of cannabis. Tell me a little bit about the church. I, you know, we've we've mentioned it here and there, sort of in, in passing, but we've never really dug into what they're doing. What, what's uh, what's going on out there? So the first church of cannabis is a church that is now formed in, in the outskirts of Indianapolis where um, a guy, Bill Levin, has pretty much found a loophole in the system, uh, which has created quite a controversy because the state of Indiana has passed a law called the Religious uh, Restoration Freedom Act, and that uh, law... Is this intended to be something to sort of address uh, cake makers not having to make cakes for gay people? Is that Exactly. There were some other uh, issues that it was targeted for, but for this case, Bill has used it to his advantage to open the first church of cannabis where during his ceremonies there are uh, people who use uh, marijuana, either in edible form, vaporized form, or you know traditional smoking uh, uh, form. And, well, people uh, should be able to worship at home, too. Well, exactly. I mean, those were some of the things that we were discussing with the counter protesters today. There um, were counter protesters. That, oh, there was a. It was a, a splendid day. There was lots of cops and lots of protesters and many peaceful people who were stuck in the middle of these agitated people and sometimes violent people. But hmm. uh, um, so Bill is a guy who's using this law as a loophole to have this church. And today at noon, this law went into effect. And the original plan was to you know, take it, not take advantage, but to, you know, exercise your right under the law. Uh, Bill's religious freedom as this law was intended to provide churches. The church has recognized, excuse me, the state has recognized this as a church. And uh, we're happy to take his money and provide him these papers and give him his permission slips. Uh, yet when it came down to, you know, noon today, a couple days ago, the police with the prosecutor, Terry Curry's, you know, guidance and assistance, you know, formulated a plan to, uh, Part block off four blocks, no parking on either side of the street. Went to neighbors' houses to like provide them stakes and caution tape and uh, <laughs> information about yeah to keep people <laughs> off their property. Essentially, they were because they were trying to make it sound like a hundred thousand stoners were going to storm this church and like chaos was going to ensue and the whole neighborhood was going to burn down. Wow! And it was going to be evil. I mean, I'm obviously over exaggerating that, but I do. Uh, it is a fact that the police. And people with the, the city police department went door to door, you know, asking people to be anti this and, and making claims that it would like ruin the neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, they wow. have they have admitted to that. The chief and the prosecutor, you know, utilize that in their plans. They also went to local churches, which is where the counter protesters came from today. Um, I didn't get the man's name who was leading it, uh, but I do have video because there was uh, four of us uh, from Ohio cop block chapters that uh, came over from Ohio to Indianapolis to help cover it as well. So we got plenty of angles of footage, and, and I'll get it later. But mm. uh, they came because the prosecutor asked them to, and there was many times where even uh, standard, regular, uh, lamestream media was asking this gentleman some questions, and he was getting pretty stumped on you know the hypocrisy with the government allowing you know other things to be legal, the property aspect, the self-ownership aspect from some of the more principled folks that were standing around. And uh, in general, it was a pretty so, good day. Just to clarify Go something, ahead. this guy actually bought a church building? I mean, does he have a, an actual physical location? 
That is correct. There is a physical oh, wow. location. It is a church. It used to be a church that, you know, failed for whatever reasons. Yep. Uh, and then he As so many it. are around America. Yeah. Because they're exactly. full of rigid, and, the, the rigid, uh, small-minded people like the ones that uh, showed up today to, uh, right. to protest that think for whatever reason they can have their philosophy and their, um, you know, you guiding principles, but you can't have yours. This sounds like yeah, it could I mean, really have some legs, though, Adam. I mean, there's a lot of history of uh, using, you know, cannabis in religious services sure. in other countries. and I think that's I why mean, this guy is putting his it, you know, money on the line yeah, here. Yeah, I was going to say, he, right. he might have some legs you here. You are correct, I- I believe they do, and I, I think that you know, f- you know, sometimes the law throws you curveballs. But I think you're right; there is some standing with this beyond it. Bill has chosen that as his fight to uh, take it to the Indiana Supreme Court, which is why, to like yesterday, he asked folks not to bring or smoke marijuana at really? the the ceremony today. Why? Yes, yet I heard. Well, he wanted to fight it in the state level Supreme Court as opposed to the criminal level, Uh and that's what he asked. Now, everybody obviously is still an individual and would do what they want, and I did hear that uh, two people did smoke inside the church when they had their ceremony anyways, uh, but I was outside trolling cops at the time, but Mm -hmm. again— may or may not have some footage of that from someone else. Now, didn't angle. the cops claim they um, were going to make arrests of anybody who uh, partook in cannabis today? Is well, that... they did They did say that, but when we arrived, um, again, I didn't get this guy's name quite yet, but he was already surrounded by a bunch of media folks giving a briefing, um, a higher up, I believe maybe This a is captain. the counter-protester or a cop? No, no, this is a, 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 a metro police officer, okay. an Indianapolis metro police officer, and I believe he was a captain because I, I know what the chief looks like, and it wasn't him. Um, so he was stating that they were there more for safety and to make sure, you know, the community is safe and personal property around the church doesn't get damaged. And so they heavily backtracked uh, mm. the statement of their aggression uh, or intended aggression. Um, but there were I did catch two undercover police officers coming into the church who once I asked them what agency they worked for and they confirmed that they were officers because I could see the bulges from their concealed guns, <laughs> which there was a sign on there that said no firearms. So obviously the property owner didn't want firearms. And I think the only people who would really blatantly disrespect that would be cops. Yep. And so I called them out and they finally admitted that they were cops, but then they were claiming that they were invited and they weren't allowed to stay there. So not being my place, but I just called them out and let everybody know. That How many people were, were attending this first service of who the invited uh, church of cannabis? <laughs> <laughs> they claim that the, that Bill Levin, the, the pastor owner of this church um, is the one who invited them. You know, he was busy starting the ceremony at that time. So I couldn't confirm or deny that, but I believe there was about two to 300 people wow. there in support of the church. And there was at least there was, they had like 80 to a hundred counter protesters from these churches. They How had long like, are you going to be in town a demo? Oh, uh, well, I'm not in Indianapolis anymore. We started heading back already uh, okay. tonight. So we're he- if so there's more you want to tell Ohio. me, stand by. We can bring it back if you got more. Hang on. Uh, if so, 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. It is the year 91001 BCE. Witness humanity's origins in Hypercronius, a classic role-playing game for Windows PCs with a story like no other games before. The liberty-oriented experience that is not to be missed. Go to zog.ninja to get your copy of Hypercronius today. Use the code FTL to get $1 off. Hypercronius. zog.ninja. Code FTL. Hey guys, I'm Tim Baker. I'm Daniel Brown. And I'm Sean Stewart. And we are the You Me and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Us three chumps love to talk too much, and for some reason other people seem to enjoy it. That's why we started You Me and BTC, which, which is your Bitcoin and Liberty podcast. Find our show at youmeandbtc.com every Thursday. We also post Bitcoin related reviews, opinion articles, and much more. Subscribe, like, and follow at youmeandbtc.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. 
If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state in back taxes, you know they'll never stop coming after you. With bank levies, wage garnishments, they'll even seize your home or business. The good news? A government program for tax debt forgiveness. It's called the Fresh Start Initiative. I'm Paul Sibley. With U.S. Tax Shield, we can help navigate the new laws, get you protected, and resolve your tax issues permanently. Call the experts at U.S. Tax Shield now for your free consultation and get a guaranteed quote to resolve your case. Call 800-436-6451. That's 800-436-6451. Cato University is the Cato Institute's premier educational event of the year. It's being held this year from July the 26th to the 31st at the Cato Institute's state-of-the-art headquarters in Washington, D.C. This annual program brings together outstanding faculty and participants from across the country and often from around the globe, with everyone sharing a commitment to liberty and learning. Cato University is a genuine community, and you can freely share viewpoints, concerns, ideas, questions, and more in an atmosphere of friendship and personal respect. It's a one-of-a-kind program for people who don't stop thinking after they got out of school. It's for people who don't want politicians or bureaucrats or officials to do their thinking for them. It's for people who value liberty. You'll learn. You'll be inspired. You'll make new friends. You'll meet great people from around the world. All of the details are spelled out at the Cato website, Cato.org, and they hope to see you there this summer, July the 26th through the 31st in Washington, D.C. Again, details are at Cato.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit FreeRoss.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. We continue here. We have enough time for you if you join us now at 855-450-FREE. It's 855-450-3733. Skype in, just like a demo has done here. The Skype username is lrn.fm, and generally you'll sound better on Skype than you will on the phones. With you in studio, it's Ian here. And Taryn P. Lupo. And Mark. Taryn, do you have a website for your books or something um, like that we can plug I'm for you? I'm currently creating a different one, but if you want to see my doctor website, that has a lot of links. Uh, it's doc, Dr. Lupo NH, so like Dr. Lupo in New Hampshire. But most people aren't in New Hampshire, so like if somebody elsewhere wanted to order a book, then oh, uh, just, just find Amazon. me on Amazon. Yeah, I'm Taryn, uh, P. Lo Taryn P. Lupo. Yeah, I'm trying to re uh, put everything under one website. I just haven't got it all up yet. Cool. Well, uh, great books. I recommend them if you love uh, good fiction with a liberty uh, flair. Thanks. Appreciate I, that. I, I've enjoyed the ones I've read. So uh, let's go back to Ademo Freeman from CopBlock.org. He is in the Ohio slash Indiana. Region uh, just leaving Indianapolis, heading back into Ohio after a day at the First Church of Cannabis, their first ceremony. Ademo, you with us? I am here. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we got you. So it was uh, hundreds of people showed up at the First Church of Cannabis today. The police were there. Counter protesters were there. About how many counter protesters would you say? Like I said, I think it was around 80 to 100. They had like wow, you know, that's a, a lot. And like two, yeah, they had a, a good number throughout the day. I mean, uh, you know, I think people were there for a good three or four hours. And and uh, what were the counter protesters saying? I mean, what was the thrust of their counter protest? Well, it was really interesting. They were very interesting, but a good base of them were kids or young teenagers. And I found that to be very interesting because <laughs> on two occasions, I found these um, young individuals in discussions with people, you know, about the signs they were holding, which were like, it's illegal in Indiana. The law is the law, you know, essentially like. Yeah, like the very like blinded, like, you know, uh, I've been told this, regurgitate this, uh, you know, statement. And one person who was like in a, Viet or a, a veteran's like hat was like, 
you know, well, I fought for your freedom to stand here and their freedom to do this. And like, you guys should both be able to do whatever. And the kid was annoyed with him. I'm, I'm not, you know, really going to touch much on his arguments, but the kid would like hold the sign in front of his face to like hide from him and in front of the not want to engage him. Yes. Yeah. And to so the man that was, and then the man wasn't yelling at him or like drilling him like a drill sergeant. He was really trying to have a conversation. And he was, he was, you know, like three or four feet away from him. He wasn't like very close to him, but the kid would hold the sign and then be like, I don't need to talk to you. You know, you and like uh, trying to belittle the older man, but uh, the man said, forget it and started to walk away. But then the mom came over and tried to like, uh, ins- like, uh, you know, um, punish, I guess the kid for like putting the sign up and stuff like that, and that he shouldn't act that way. And the kid like pushed the sign into his mom's uh, chest and said, fine, you hold the sign. So I got that on video and, it's, and, and then she turned around and realized she turned around and realized that I was, I uh, was recording this with my camera at the time. And she kind of like froze for a second. I said, I know, I said, I know brainwashing kids is hard these days. You know? And she's like, Oh no, I don't brainwash them. And I was like, well, he didn't seem to have his own opinion on the matter. You know, mm-hmm. like he seemed to react childishly. And like, if he really believed that he would have tried to communicate more. And then she started to say why she thought marijuana was legal. And a group of people were, you know, like they have a lot of the hypocrisy, you know, there are other, they love dragging out the kids. I mean, I've been to, anybody ask the kids, Hey, do you think your friends would be better off in jail than smoking marijuana? No, they probably got out of school or something to go do this. Well, you know, and I, and I wondered by this, and this is why I decided to stay on because Mark, you had asked like what other issues are there besides property rights and self ownerships. And I agree. And I think the children, uh, really deflected that those two points. Cause then there was like many other things that were talked about, you know, like, you know, like, well, what about this or that? And it's like, you know, again, I I would always try to bring it back whenever I could. But again, there was a large number of pro supporters and a decent sized number of counter pros, or at least the most I've seen in a while. Yeah, for sure. And so when, when two people start talking, all of a sudden, like questions from like five other people come from all of the shoulders and stuff. And so it's it's hard hard to to communicate. Right. right, That's going to have really roots or anything like that. But I did always try to bring it back to that. Like, you know, it shouldn't matter. This is their property or these are these people's bodies. You know, like I also tried to ask a lot of the cops why, if they have conflicting laws where one law says arrest, the other one says do, that do, do not arrest, then why did they cho- choose force today? Why didn't they mm-hmm. choose to say, we're not doing anything until you guys clear this up? Because I'm always told, you know, we should run for office and we can make a difference. Well, I'm pretty sure if the enforcers just don't enforce, they can have their problem that they believe there is cleared up. But yet they've chose to use force that day. They brought out hundreds of cops, you know, for a little small church on the outskirts of Indianapolis, hundreds. They it's were incredible. everywhere. They were driving around in four wheelers on bicycles. They had four blocks of all of this because somebody was going to smoke a joint. I mean, this is insane. Voluntarily, and maybe pass it to the left. Ian. Right, that's what was going to happen. <laughs> I don't know, but now, <laughs> what's yeah, next? How many of these cops and how many of these parents have smoked marijuana? Oh, a lot of them. But they want to throw somebody in <laughs> oh. jail for doing it. I want to know what the collection plate well, looked like. What were people putting in the collection plate? <laughs> Was it like roach clips and if that happens. Right. <laughs> but I did ask a lot of the counter protesters too, like, have you ever smoked pot? And you know, all of them would say no. And it's like, I don't think you necessarily have to smoke pot to formulate an opinion about it, but I think it might help in some circumstance because you would realize that it's not very harmful in all these other aspects. But either way, uh, there, there was so many other hypocritical moments that were going on. Wow, this right really sounds like it's going to make some interesting videos. So I imagine you're going to be releasing that over at copblock.org or or what? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm going to get to some stable internet and get to working as soon as possible. Awesome. So. You're doing great work, Ademo. Uh, what's next for the First Church of Cannabis? I mean, this was their first service. How often are they planning on having them? Do you know anything about that? Well, he wanted to do weekly services, but right now uh, he's not exactly sure what kind of schedule because of the time frame of the court. And, you know, you and I have experience with the courts, and I tried to explain to him today that that could be years. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't, I didn't get any, you know, concrete answer from him on that question, but we did exchange uh, contact information, and I do have some friends in Indiana. Cop block folks are out there who did come down today as well. And so, uh, that we hope to stay in touch and you know keep everyone updated as the story progresses. Cool. If you get a chance, send his contact info uh, over to me. I, we might want to have this guy on to uh, to talk about this in in greater detail. Demo, thanks for coming on Sounds Free great. Talk Live, man. I appreciate it. Drive safe thanks out for there. Having me. Yep, that's a Demo yep. Freeman from CopBlock.org. Uh, let's jump back into the video because I know yeah, you haven't, I you see haven't the last seen the whole minutes. thing here. So here's the remainder of NBC's Today Show reporting on Robin Hood of Keene. We're picking up in the middle of it here where they're showing some of the footage of me kind of giving one of the parking enforcers a hard time here. Um, 
They, they stick cameras in their face. You say this is about harassment, but in the city's own follow-up lawsuit, you say you are seeking money damages for injuries sustained by the city. Isn't this about money? No, it's really about getting an injunction to protect, protect our employees. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Thank goodness, uh, Jeff, the, uh, the host here, the, uh, the newsman, Jeff Ross Rossin, asked that question. I don't know if that's ever been asked uh, on a video of the city of Keene officials. Yeah, nobody before. actually wants to hold the government responsible for something. I mean, for dear God, they're they're suing for damages. Yeah. The state's Supreme Court ruling the Robin Hoods are protected by the First Amendment and can continue their work. But adding the city can argue for a safety zone around the meter maids. Total save just in the nick of time. Just to clarify, they can argue for the safety zone, but it's very unlikely that they're going to be granted one. I mean, I don't want to go out on a limb and predict what a court is going to do, but there are a lot of uh, there are other cases that have gone to Supreme Court uh, that have basically ruled these zones unconstitutional. So I don't expect they're going to do uh, to be successful in their endeavors. The Robin Hoods say they'll be out there again today. Absolutely. It's the right thing to do. The city tells us they are planning to go back to court asking for a 15-foot perimeter around those meter maids so the Robin Hoods can't get too close. Lots of debate over this at this desk as well. And by the way, we want to hear from you. Uh, Facebook.com slash Ross and Reports. Let us know what you think. But you guys were talking about this the whole time. Love yeah. everything they're doing except talking to the meter yeah, accounts. Need what, to do th that. Those people are just doing their jobs. They're yeah, probably making that. a very uh -huh. little salary. Boom. Why are they're just doing their job. Come you on. have no idea what government bureaucrats make in Keene, New Hampshire, and the kind of benefits that they <laughs> Matt get. Matt Lauer. Harass those people or even talk to them. But this isn't even the story I thought it was. I thought they were suing because they didn't like the revenue being taken away. Yeah. They're suing because they're harassing the parking That's what the city employees. says. A, a meter maid actually had to quit their job. Yeah. The meter maid said that being a meter maid in Keene, New Hampshire was harder than being <laughs> in Iraq. I think the meter maid may have some issues. Do a good deed without being obnoxious right. about yeah. it. Absolutely. I like that it's five cents for 15 minutes in, in Keene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. Yes. Good point. We need that in New York City. But you didn't like the fact they here. left the card. What was no, your problem with that? I think if that? you're going to do something out of the kindness of your heart, you just do it anonymously. They're not doing it out of the kindness of their heart. It's an operation. I mean, this lady is so... Well, no, it's a volunteer uh, thing for the most they're part. They're getting money. There's some donations that come in, but it's not very much. I mean, I, I, the point is, it's an outreach. It is I outreach. I mean, it's right. education. So help yeah. me out here, Ian. They used to get the the Robin Hooders used to get paid to do this. Are you saying that they're no longer being paid at all? Uh, there is there's money coming in, and that money does go to uh, Garrett, who is the primary. That's why Robin they Hooder. leave the card in order to keep right. the whole operation but it is an going. Outreach primarily. I mean, the operation would have gone on whether or not there was you know money yeah. coming in. It it's, would have gone on for the camera, but it operation. wouldn't go on daily like it is. Well, right. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Um, but I agree with, with Taryn. The primary purpose is to save people from tickets and uh, get the ideas of freedom out there. So you can learn more at robinhood.freekeen.com. We'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Hi. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies, 
and a secure way to store them, and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit strategicshelters.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 1st, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.59 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,169 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $260. Antiwar.com reports in the past Iranian nuclear talks have had to be extended repeatedly as the early deadlines were woefully over-optimistic about the speed with which the deals of the term could be finalized. Those extensions were generally three to six months, which is what was expected this time around when yesterday's deadline was reached. Instead, the talks were simply extended one week to July 7th, which lends weight to reports in recent days that a major breakthrough on the talks is in fact close. While it does not necessarily mean that July 7th is a firm deadline, that they moved the bar out so little suggests something significant is close. Western officials are also confirming once again that Iran has met the terms of another interim agreement, this time related to the size of its low enrichment uranium stockpile. The formal IAEA report to that effect is expected in the coming days. At the same time, the Obama administration sought to reassure hawks who oppose a nuclear deal in the wake of the latest extension, declaring that the U.S. could walk away from the talks at any time if it wanted to, and would do so if Iran doesn't give them what they want. Such threats are almost certainly idle, but the U.S. has been keen, whenever a deadline is so close, to start trying to play hardball, even as it becomes increasingly apparent that they aren't going to add to the timeline. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. FANS help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the FANS program, visit fans.fppradio.com. UPI reports a report released Tuesday by the Central Intelligence Agency reveals that the agency has a lack of diversity among its high-ranking workforce. The diversity and leadership study showed less than 24% of the CIA workforce and only 10.8% of its top ranks are composed of minorities. In the past seven years, minority recruitment for CIA jobs has dropped to 19.3% from a high point of 31.5% in 2008. Both the press release and a news conference on Tuesday confirmed Director John Brennan's plan to alleviate the lack of diversity in CIA leadership. The plan involves several measures. By October